talented. All right, well. This is a dream, Russell. <laughs> yep. You've been dreaming for about 15 years now. Oh, shit. That put me back in high school. That's rough. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's hop in the roll 20. Fox. You're the last person to get in. That means you die first, I think. So oh, no. <laughs> so we laughed off less... Se- laughed off? God fucking damn it, it's too early for that. We left off last <laughs> session. <laughs> we laughed off last session. That's like, that is some gnome talk right there. Uh, we left off last session. We were in the bar. The salty... Hang on. Thirsty devil. <laughs> I just want to say salty because borrowed. But the thirsty devil. That's right. And um, salty was salty. That we know. <laughs> Although the he's fucked over. <laughs> just just a little bit. Just a just a tiny bit. And I know exactly actually. how he feels. I still haven't been paid. No, you got you got paid. No, from that giant job that took two weeks to do. I still haven't been paid. Oh, I thought. Sorry, I thought you were referring to <laughs> like, yeah. So like, how does how does salty feel? Oh, I'm pretty murderous right now. How about you, salty? <laughs> I could go for some murder. But um. Anyway, so uh, everyone's enjoying their coin, except for salty. Um, the gnomes are off doing gnome things. <laughs> you know, Ollie bought. Uh, a bunch of rounds for Salty and himself. And Salty still has the 500 gold for the dead fifth gnome. That's correct. Right now he does anyway. And we're all we're all looking towards the future. Um, are we a band of adventurers? Maybe not. Are we at least a, a group willing to work together a little longer? Potentially. Certainly. Potentially. So. Um, Ollie, you know, sort of excuses himself for the evening and, and heads off to bed. Um, and you're all, uh, I'm going to say maybe everyone except Delia. I'm not sure how she feels on drinking, but is, is potentially tipsy at least at this point, if not flat out drunk. Uh, it's been a long night of celebrations. She's the lightest of the lightweights. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the the bartender, you know, he he comes up and Sorry, he's, as he's wiping on tables, uh, wiping off tables, and he says, uh, "Got a letter for you from the man in the corner." Passes it to you. He, he goes back. T- takes his uh, I'm not ordering this shit. <laughs> Is the man in the corner another yes. dwarf? He so is another dwarf. With? Do they have a hood pulled over their head mysteriously? They don't. <laughs> um, I did look at five girls. Because they're about to get a fucking boot. <laughs> <laughs> they are wearing a wide-brimmed hat. And they have a... um, a, Let's see. like a Like a greenish sort of cloak. Um, some sort of studded leather armor, but the most uh, noticeable. Do they have a pistol in their holster. <laughs> ah, yes, they do actually. But the no, most so Clint Eastwood. <laughs> the most noticeable uh, feature, though, aside from the wide brim hat, is a metal gauntlet, a singular metal gauntlet on their right hand. Does it have sockets for jams on the knuckles? No, yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it'll snap. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. What, um, any ideas to the design? Something along the lines of maybe helping identify a little bit more about this stranger? Well, it's definitely of dwarven make. Um, so I would need like a knowledge history or local history. Um, I can probably provide that for you. Oh, okay, Let's cool. See. D20, roll one, and. Uh, well, you also have well, a. You might have a bonus in that. I I think talent yeah, is quite. Pulling pulling that character sheet up. Really Hopefully, you guys don't hear that. That uh, it's fucking terrifying in here right now. You got them ghosts. Oh. Why? Oh, it's my the one fucking cat just wants in, and she's like just fucking sticking <laughs> sticking her paw and trying to tear the door open from underneath. 
No, it'll be even great. We'll just play this one right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it does look like you have a, a six because you do have it skilled. So yeah. Hmm. Um, it actually belongs to basically with the dwarves. There's several families. Some family names are more common than others. Um, but one of the sort of older family names, although they don't tend to be super common, is um, it's Jesus Christ. <laughs> Like she needs to calm down. <laughs> She's just so fucking angry. <laughs> anyway, is Steel Grip. That's just one of the dwarven family names. And they're most noted for wearing just a singular, usually steel, but it could be a, of any metal gauntlet on their um, on one of their hands. It's just something they've sort of passed down as a tradition. Hmm. All right. Well, let's see the obvious. What does the letter say? All right. So you open uh, the letter, and it's uh, essentially like a, an ad, <laughs> like you would you know read in the paper, like a classified ad. It said looking for adventurers uh, something along the lines of like do you long for travel want to make quick coin it's simple join the guild of adventurers and then you know in the fine print small monthly fee <laughs> like stuff like that okay sure <laughs> How small is this monthly fee, or is that just not listed? Um, uh, five five gold a month. Eh, eh. And this doesn't guarantee us anything. No. Let's go talk with Mister Eastwood and see what <laughs> the fuck, bro. So you. You pull up at his table, and he welcomes you. Uh, well, I noticed your little coterie, and I said, that looks like a group of adventurers, if ever I heard one. I also noticed your parking earlier. That's what we need! <laughs> That's the kind of gumption I want in the Adventurers Guild. Well, if the Adventurers Guild is common with... Flying boots. I don't think I'll be too comfortable with that. I like my boots on the water. <laughs> Maybe not common, but it's happened before. Now, here's my happened offer. Happened happened yesterday. <laughs> my offer is this. Join the guild. I can see at least some of you are competent enough in a fight. And I'll give the pass you along some jobs. Think of it as a, uh, it's an impolite word, but there's like a bounty board. Some of them will be maybe a little dubious in nature, but you can pass. A lot of them are just simply going and rustling around in an old tavern cellar and clearing out rats. How big are the rats? All depends. Oh, wait. Clarify, are we talking rats like the rodents, or are we talking rat folk? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, want, I want the terms and conditions of this spelled out very clearly before I sign any more damned documents. The last two I signed required blood, and I wasn't too fond of the turnout for that one. Uh, that's fair enough. No, uh, the Adventurer's Guild doesn't have quite the magical and ancient legally binding prowess that... Uh, Angbox Kingdom uses. Indeed, we are more of a first come, first serve type service. We hook you up with clients who in turn pay us and we pay you. And you take how much off the top? Well, it depends on the job. Um, to be quite frank with you, it's usually only. Uh, five percent 
but um, sometimes if we have to go out of our way to find special services, um, we will charge the client a fee on top of the percent. So you're charging the clients, not the cost, not the operators then? Well, that's correct, yeah. Second question for you. Have you hired that table of nodes? <laughs> uh, not yet. Should I? As long as you don't mind having some tinnitus, I think they'd be a good fit. Gnomes, eh? All right. Okay. I'll tell you this much. That boat got us from here to Browdeer Knock, and them crazy little short bastards killed a sea devil by themselves by jumping on the bastard and stabbing it to death in the water. I can't, can't say I believe you, but fascinating. He's being completely honest. Points at the pirate hat. I know me water. <laughs> Well, fair enough. I'll offer it to them. Do you usually travel as a group? The gnomes are a late addition. Mm. Other than that, I guess. Well, I, I have several jobs, but maybe to break you in, if you're interested, I have one. Um, I suppose if you're feeling a bit racy, I could also offer you a bounty, but I'm not sure about how you feel about uh, bounty hunting. Is that something up your alley? I've had a couple of bounties put on myself. I don't know how many collected. Hmm. Uh, well, we'll start with the first job. tell me about the, the first one before we go hunting heads? Uh, it's quite simple. Uh, merchant caravan just needs some guards. You tag along, make sure they're all right. You uh, take some coin at the end. Mm -hmm. And this caravan's going. Well, uh, it's it's going about. Uh, well, I mean that's fucking meta. Um, it's going to. I didn't think of a name. What's a good name for a town? Tr Trots Trotstem. It's uh, heading off to Trotstem, just west of Angbach. Take you so, um, well, they, uh, they three, bring in three, four the horses then, eh? Aye, yeah. I, I think they may even have, uh, if you're lucky, uh, a spare card. Hmm. All right. Well, I might be interested in going to Trotstim. It depends. Got family down in Gildenock, if you couldn't guess by the hair. Ah, <laughs> I thought I recognized it. I'm from Angbar myself. Mm. So how has Angbar been? I've not been there since... Oh, it's... Years. The political climate's a bit dicey. Um, the king's just kind of on his last legs, and there's a lot of talk of who's next online. Aside from that, you know, still work, still hot. <laughs> Oh, uh, right, he lost his last son. Did they ever find him, or is he just declared dead? Uh, just, unfortunately, declared... Well, they don't want to say, because it'll upset the common folk, but that's where we... Uh, as for the bounty, if you feel up to such a task, um... It's a, a gentleman by the name of Barnabas. Uh, can't tell you more about him, but it is dead or alive. Won't always be, but this time, I dead or alive, quite a price on his head. Well, Barnabas doesn't sound like a very intimidating name. I don't reckon he is, no. Swindle a couple of gambling tables? Ah, uh, unfortunately... Until you sign on with the Adventurer's Guild, I can't provide you with any more information. Well, I read your little contract here. Now, tell you what, I'll sign on. 
I'm not paying you that five gold until you pay me. Ah. Very well. Um, your sort of fees are due the first of the month. Not this one, of course, but you'll pay twice next month should you get paid. Sort of shakes your hand, and he pro-offers his hand to anyone else. Sorry, I was coughing. Um, still kind of am. Continue. Uh, question. The occupants yes. of Trotstam, are they humans, dwarves, elves? Uh, so Trotstam is still um, very dwarfy. Yeah. It's in the middle, well, it's sort of on the westish part of the Angbok Desert. I can go ahead and mark it on the map for you. It would be roughly here. Something like that. Oh, wait, T? I was going to have the caravan go much further, but I decided, uh, I mean, sort of out of character. Um, when I was writing like two mission ideas, I was thinking have the one caravan go halfway to Guildnock. Uh, and then the other mission sort of get you there at the end of it. But I thought it made a lot more sense to have it sort of be a local uh, trip. I mean, it is still like th three days travel. Um, but then you just could get a boat after. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it just made more sense than the drop you in the middle of the world. <laughs> so, yeah. Hmm. So is there going to be a pass? through the mountains or are we there going is up so angbok itself um you can sort of leave out this end here like an entrance there these are like the three main entrances to angbok yeah and so we can crap out the back door that's right and then it's three four days Let's just move it a titch oh about there that's a little better all right, and then Guild Knock is where, for reference? Like... Far to the west. Far beyond far. So, like, beyond that way. That's correct, yeah. Halfway, my ass. <laughs> no, like I said, I changed my mind on the halfway thing. Because <laughs> I didn't want to just crap you in the middle of nowhere. Hmm. Yeah. So it looks like Trotstrom is still in the middle of the Angbok Desert. Uh, it's sort of near the end of it, but yes. It is still very much in Desert Town. So it's a watering hole, then? It is. It's built around a tiny lake. Hmm. All right, well, did we ever get a name out of this steel grip? Oh, um, no, he didn't mention his name, no. Well, he's putting us down on a contract. Surely he should have his name at the head of it. Uh, sure. Um, Era Broke Steel Grip. <laughs> hmm. So, um, to just a little nudge, nudge. He's sort of offering his, his hand out to be shaken to join the Adventurer's Guild. Well, I mean, hope he's already sitting there, of course. That's correct. Know. I was just more looking at, like, Zaws or Talon or Delia, if they were interested anyway. <laughs> Who are still sitting across the room at the bar. <laughs> That's... <laughs> no. <laughs> Roll 20 for your, your perceptions. Do you understand anything of what's going on? You're just kind of trying to read lips. <laughs> well, I suppose Salty well, could head... if we were speaking in Dwarven, like, just everybody's... What the fuck? That's no, fair. I, got this. I guess Salty could go back and sort of let everyone know about uh, the potential for this. Wall my ass back over to the bar. Right. The crazy gentleman in the hat says, he'll pay us, but we have to pay him, but he'll pay us more money if we go do jobs for him. <laughs> so I give mercenary a confusing work. Look. Uh, mercenary asterisk. Some of it's getting, some of it's not. But that's, uh... Yeah. Well, is this killing, or is it not? Well, there's two. There's one that's gonna take us 
out the back of Angbuck, over to Trotstrom. Just, oh no, guard the caravan going mm. through the desert. So guard yourself against thirst, mostly. And the other one's on some... Barnabas. I've yet to ask about him. That one they want to take. Well, dead or alive, rooms. actually. Sorry. Yeah. But usually if it's a dead or alive, then even if you bring them back alive, they're like just going to the headsman's block. Ah, usually, yes. If you lot think about it, I'm going to go ask about this Barnabas. If you're interested, come sign your names. So, Foxy, does Delia have any interest in adventuring or money or a job or some such hanging out with the group? I don't like that five five gold a month thing, though. Oh, that's peanuts. You're going to be making way more than that. Um, I, there's I, jobs, enough jobs. Well, as long as you make five gold a month. That's all you got to do. Which means that we need to find jobs that pay a minimum of 20 gold a month. That's right, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that'll be... That's literally probably hunting rats. That Yeah, that's probably like just send somebody to go kick some rats. Yeah, or like, like um, delivering mail or something. Yeah. So um, you, you return and, and Barna... Uh, <clears throat> And uh, Steel Grip looks at you, sort of expectantly. Well, are they in or or not? Well, I explained it to them. They can be in if they choose to be. Since I'm already in, mm. what's about this Barnabas here? Well, if you're already in, I suppose. Um, uh, easiest way to do it is is thus. And he flicks his, uh, sort of snaps his fingers, and a small little parchment appears. He hands it to you, and he's like. This will detail everything about the bounty. Uh, you're not the first to get it, nor will you be the last. Any bounties, should you qualify, are open season, as it were. The first to find, the first to uh, get paid. And if somebody else tries to pilfer my bounty, regardless of their guild affiliation, I'm going to lay them out. That's quite reasonable. I wish I could say we haven't had conflicts in the past. Well, I'm um, just saying, if I just spent the last two days chasing some son of a bitch, and somebody comes over and cuts off his head, I'm going to cut off theirs. <laughs> well, I think that's only fair. Now, um, I suppose I, I could just give you a summation of what you'll find detailing the paper. It's Barnabas Jex is the man you're looking for. He's, um, how shall I say, a wanted criminal for one, but in more ways than you might expect. From what information we've gathered, he went to Pelennor on business. What, I don't know. Although it does seem like he was intended to deliver some goods back here to the King of Angba. Uh, more specifically, Goldbeard. Um, so I'm not sure, you know, <laughs> whether that matters too much. Unfortunately, after retrieving said goods, legally, I'm sure, he's gone and disappeared. Seems like, for whatever reason, he decided not to head back to Angbok, and he has made his way further west. If he's disappeared, then how do they know he went twist? Well, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, Goldbeard is a very paranoid fellow, and he had him tailed the whole way. Well, I'd rather be tailed than scryed. I don't trust magic. Well, that's fair enough. That's why I always wear one of these, and he sort of pulls out a necklace. <laughs> It's like, they say it protects you from all forms of magical prying. Well, I'll believe it when I try it myself, but... Oh, as for the bounty, 
dead or alive on Barnabas Jex, um, they just ask that you return the chest to Engbok, of course. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> we haven't been told this yet, sorry. <laughs> sorry, just a little meta there. Sorry, please continue. All right, now, if we're operating off my old procedure, then I'm returning the chest. I'm not returning the contents and the chest. Ah, well, the Adventurers Guild works somewhat differently than the Angbok legal system. Thank God for that. And he knocks on the table. Angbok be damned. Aye. I'm talking about when I went and retrieved people's pay chests from the bottom of the ocean. They didn't give a damn about the contents. They just wanted the chest for pride's sake. Well, we have... Well, when I got my first job from Angbok, it was at a guard post. And we were all promised our fair share of 50 gold pieces. What we didn't realize is it was 50 gold pieces split. Quite peeved, I can tell you. But I've had many years to get over that. Um, either way, as long as you retrieve the contents of the chest, it, you may notice, a small font recommended you don't open it. Um, I'm sure no one's going to know if you did. Mm -hmm. So it's magic then, got it. Anyway, it's a thousand gold, should you catch Barnabas. As for the escort, should you arrive in Trotsdam with all the cargo, 600 gold pieces your way. Divided among however many decide to come with you, of course. Well, I guess we can go ask them. Wait, them mod over. Because I guess they've just been deliberating. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, doorbell just rang, but I'm in. So. Cool. So Talon shakes the hand of Steel Grip. Oh, but my teacher's going. I have to go. I got um, me some common. Well, it it was Vard. I completely forgot the numbers, though. Uh, but I'm fine with those being the numbers, yeah. Just for the sake of me putting that crap down, because I know I'm going to forget the exact numbers, which is... Yeah, no, I'm fine with the 1,500 for the bounty, 800 for the caravan. Okay. So as you all, like, shake his hand, he hands you a small... Um, I forget they're called a brooch, if you will. Um, but just like a little, like a pin. Small, it would just clip onto sort of the neck of your cloak or something like that. And it's just sort of a sign that you're a proper adventurer. Licensed out through the guild. Mm. Now, there's no... There's nothing stipulating you have to wear it all the time, um, but it could be useful to wear it so that people know to contact you for jobs. You know? Hey, fair. Because mm -hmm. that way you could be chilling in a tavern anywhere and someone can be like, oh, can you save my baby? <laughs> and you'll be like, fuck it. <laughs> baby savings and extra fights after you. <laughs> That's right. Hours. If they're under four, it's twice as much. <laughs> if there's killing involved because you have giant rats in your basement, then we triple the fee. <laughs> That's right, yeah. We don't take bullshit. <laughs> if your baby is somehow stuck in a tree, then you'd need to call the fire department because that's a cat. <laughs> call 999. <laughs> All right. So how does Delia feel about this? She's the only quiet one right now. Um, she's not 100% sure about it, but kind of feels like she should stick with the group, because 
the world is apparently very dangerous out there, so. That's true. And these are the only people you know. You know, I mean, you have obviously your, your family from back home, but you haven't seen them in what feels like a million years. <laughs> Mostly because you've been was... encased in rock shit. Sorry. I was going to ask if there was anything sketchy about the contracts, but with my perception, I probably won't be able to figure it out. Um, so we're going to go ahead and say just a generic thing, a dwarven legal document, fine prints important, read those and learn to read those and love them. Um, but the Adventurer's Guild is beyond just dwarves, it, it goes for everyone, it's sort of a worldwide thing, and pretty much no other race except dwarves are as to the letter about things, so they're they're more sort of open to interpretation, I suppose. And not, you know, obviously signed in your own blood and legally binding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, she's with talent. She's had enough of that. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Oh, just wait till uh, you get to guild now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Salty's done his time. The rest of you haven't. Um, so... Do we head out in the morning for the caravan? Do we pass on the caravan and go for the bounty? Are we bringing Ollie too, or is he staying here? Well, I Ollie's... Imagine Ollie be staying here. That's right. He's not an adventurer, unfortunately. You might uh, be able to talk him into coming to the guild knock, but... Yeah? The bounty on Barnabas, is, mm -hmm. it, is it on him? Or is it on the chest? Or is there an extra for bringing back the chest? Or how is this working? So specifically, um, it is on the chest. But it's, again, it was posted by Goldbeard. So it's worded like, oh, it's just a bounty hunt. But the chest is the, the main object, yeah. Or rather, the contents within. So you don't technically have to kill Barnabas, Jax. <laughs> just cloud him upside the head and take the chest. And back That's off. right. It's kind of just a robbery at this point. <laughs> <laughs> a legally allowed robbery. Big thing. Mm -hmm. So, what's Saw's doing? Well, Zaz, Zaz said he was in. He wants to go with Talon so we can learn more common. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, if we're already heading west, and I say let's grab the caravan because that's money to go part of the way to where we need to be. Yep. Yeah. And then were we planning on... Well, we, we always... The thing is, we always have the paper for the bounty. Right, we don't have to like commit to it unless we want to. But we always have it now as an option. Hmm. You guys see my beautiful map I just made? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Uh, do we have a bounty for the caravan, or you or don't have a bounty, but you know, a, a contract for the caravan? Uh, yeah, he can like snap his fingers, and you get a a small scroll for that as well. Are but again, mountains? sorry. Is it those mountains? Yes. No, we're we're going across an ocean <laughs> again. <laughs> not not again. No. So the thing is, uh, now the the caravan escort that's a little different because obviously no one can really steal that from you. You're literally sitting on the caravan, <laughs> but. Stuff like the bounty or other adventure things. Maybe if you had to steal something from someone or if you had to deliver a message. That could be time sensitive, as it were. But the caravans just go with the caravan. Um, it, it does mention that they would like to leave as soon as possible.
I mean, Salty's done nothing but drink, so whatever. He can just go sleep on the caravan. Oh, that's true. You can even sleep on it tonight. Uh, Especially because we're going to be going through the desert, so going at night would be more preferable. Not a million degrees. Should probably stock up on like food and water and stuff before we go too. Sure. Ooh. So um, it'll take three to four days, depending on the pace oh, crap. That's set. Yeah. Uh, before we leave, leave. Uh, can I go get the gold lettering I stole from the mages keep appraised? Yep. And or sold. So how many letters did you end up with? Uh, I don't Wait. recall the exact amount. I didn't write it out. I think it was something like 10 letters. I think it was something like 10 or 12, yeah. I'm going to say yeah, you can get like 10 gold it was like an entire. Each. Oh, damn. Yeah, because it, like, it was the entire phrase and there was only like yeah, 10 or 12. Yeah. So, can you make me... Um, What is it called when you roll your underworld knowledge? Um, th th That specifically affects what skill? Uh, right. So, underworld knowledge. God, what the fuck? It keeps dicking me around and putting me back on my main page. Okay. Yeah, you you've seen knowledge. that too, eh? You're the one that's doing that, you fuck? Oh, that was me. Oh, that's weird that I can move your sheet like that. That's annoying as hell. Yeah. Okay, knowledge to engineering, survival checks while in underground or in urban terrain. Okay, <laughs> go ahead, Dilly. Additionally, yeah. though, like it says down there, modified settlements, corruption, crime, economics, yeah. knowledge of local contacts, plus four on the roll. Huh. Okay. Okay, cool. Why oh, really affect survival? So, whichever you have, knowledge, engineering, or survival, um, which, whichever you feel like would be higher, you can give that a roll. I do have survival. And that is. Wait, I think that's modified due to the salt beard, right? Yeah, probably. And then, like, wisdom or whatever adds to it. Yep. Oh, <laughs> my face when I completely forgot about the primary modifiers for salt beard. Oh, really? Plus one racial attack bonus and plus two dodge bonus to AC against creature of the, of the aquatic or <laughs> <laughs> Would have helped. Not that I took any damage anyways, but yeah, the plus one attack would have helped. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so... Call it. No, no, no. No, no, just discussing crap. So, I mean, they're both the same. So let me get rid of... Whichever. I mean, I guess... Like, technically, it's not that. That's the plus two from the thing, so it's a 19. Oh, that's fine. Um, Yeah, so you do manage to find someone that will pawn them off discreetly. You would have got 10 gold either way, but this way, <laughs> it was discreet. Well, exactly, and just, you know, kind of trade them to him. He goes over and finds, like, a, a smeltery and just, hey, I've got gold. Yeah, just don't ask. That's right, yeah. Okay, so we're going with how many of the letters, then? Um, I forget how many. Let's just say you had 12, and then you can change that if you... I think I think it was about twelve though. Yeah. Um. Either way, so are we leaving this evening? We're just going to quickly purchase a bunch of drink, uh, a little bit of food, and pass out in the back. Uh, we leave at night, right? Well, that's well, that's, that's what Copper that's, Buckle uh, was suggesting. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. be traveling through the Angbok Desert, and it's gonna be a million degrees in the day. So I say let's leave like as soon as possible. All right, so I'm gonna be on on top of the caravan then. <laughs> well, since we're being paid to protect the chest in the caravan, I think Salty's just gonna like sleep on top of that. All oh, right. Just use use that as his uh, cot. So when you yeah. when you arrive, you're greeted by two um, dwarves. And they're standing next to, there's basically a large caravan being pulled by two, um, like, let's say two horses. And then there's a small cart that's, that has, like, one horse pulling it. And you could all probably 
you know, lay down except for Zaz in the cart. Um, Zaz would have to like prop himself up against the back. Um, so one of time underneath it. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway, um, sorry. There, there's two dwarves sort of standing next to it, though. One of them is sleeping, the other is pacing around. <laughs> As all the other contract, and I assume these two are the caravaneers, so let's go talk to them. I'm going with him. Upon coming up close... Oh, Zelfus, you might have missed. You got a little brooch. Um, I did now. Yeah, everyone did. It's just like the symbol for the Adventurer's Guild. Oh, you could, okay. like clip it on like your cloak or something like that, your tunic. It's your copper badge so the people know to come running up to you when, ah, Dingo stole my baby. Head. That's right, yeah. Please, I can't find my golden exclamation point. I need to hold it above my head. So the question is, who is wearing their Adventurer's <clears throat> Guild badge? I'll keep it on there. Okay. So <laughs> I'm, Let's just take it and like just pin it to like the top of my pirate hat so it's like it's above the skull and crossbones. Oh, okay, that's fun too, yeah. So seeing the two of you approach, uh the one dwarf like nudges the other one and sort of stands up and it's like, Ah how glad I am to see two adventurers. Uh, one even being a dwarf. How are you? Well, I'm half drunk. I got promised I'd get paid. And I've got a hundred gold in my pocket, so I'd say it's a good day. <laughs> I'm glad to hear. Um, we have precious cargo. Um, I'm hoping there'll be nothing in between here and there. It's just I've I've heard some tales of bandits, um, sort of in the mountain range. So I, you know, precautions. <laughs> That's why we hired the Adventurers Guild, of course, to protect us. Um, we have a cart for you to sleep in, uh, should you like. One of you will have to sort of man the horses, as it were. Um, but aside from that, yeah, I think we're, we're good to go whenever you're ready. Well, I say we head out now. It's not going to get any, any colder in the desert. <laughs> That's excellent. Um, the only thing uh, is I, I do ask not to disturb the cargo. It's quite volatile. That. Uh, no. That, that, fine volatile. If I sneeze, we die? Or no. Uh, not, I have questions as well. Not quite. <laughs> no, no. Just. Um, it's uh, a lot less valuable. Uh, shooken. Shaken? Uh, sorry, my comment's not the best. But it is a lot. Um, it is pref preferable. I'll, in fact, I'll pay you a hundred extra gold should we arrive with, you know, um, n n none of it damaged. Right. Well, should we go get some, like, pillows to put under it then? Oh, we've got, we have that <laughs> all arranged. I'm, I'm just, you know, um, it should uh, combat arise or something. I know adventurers... Do you like to jump up on things and swing their axes? But if we, if we could protect the, the caravan. That's why we have the, the separate cart for you to, you know, uh, just stay a safer distance away. All right, it'll stay in your second cart. But if you lot take off, then I'm not responsible for you no more. Well, no, that's that's quite fair, and we we do have the money. To, uh, don't worry, we'll we'll pay you when we get there. That sounds suspicious. We do have the money. Don't <laughs> <worry>. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna rip you off. I fucking promise. <laughs> well, this dwarf does seem to be a bit shaky. Although we don't know how long he's been awake. It is quite late in the evening. <laughs> His blood is half caffeine. Does anyone have? Um, ooh. What is the skill for that? Um, back in the day, like sense motive, that's still the skill. Yep. Perception. Bingo. Does anyone have sense motive? 
I don't have I, it as a class skill. Not on this character. No. <laughs> you can, you can always attempt it untrained. I got a negative two assists. <laughs> We're gonna need like a seventeen though. Hey! Is that a critical? Oh! That was a critical. Oh. <laughs> Nicely done. Bart, fucking Brawlgar just hang the fuck on. You. Brawlgar's <laughs> eyes just <laughs> just narrowly. He said he has the money, but he's acting suspicious. Brawlgar presses X to doubt. Yeah. Um. So you can you can discern that yes, this dwarf is quite jumpy. He definitely is not telling you the whole story. Seems like he has something to hide. Like he's dodging around something. Hmm. Aside from that, is there anything you want to probe him on? Uh, well, he already said the contents are volatile, which means he probably doesn't want to open the chest and show us, so that's a bit of a moot point to ask. Uh, so we're going to say it's like a, it's like a closed caravan. Let's, um... You might still know what's in there, though, right? Yeah, so let's just say it's like obviously with box wheels because that's dwarves. So it doesn't have <laughs> box wheels, but you know what I mean? It would be something sort of like this and that's where the dwarves sit on and then these are your little box horses. But you, you get the, the idea. So, But it is entirely enclosed. Um, kind of like a carriage would be but with no windows. All, only longer, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, the old memes, dude. <laughs> Alright, so it's kind of got a low top to it, though, so it's kind of closed like a uh, like a hearse, almost? Um, It's not super low, no, but it's not well, like... I mean, if if the dwarves are sitting here, they'd be like that tall at least, and this doesn't have the the huge normal canopy. Okay. You sure? <laughs> it looks like it does. <laughs> well, that's weird. <laughs> yeah. Just imagine like the old canopy ones, like you would out of a pioneer film, but boxed in, like with a um, wood. Mm. Which which wood? Who would like to make a perception check? Staring at these characters here. Don't have to. Not saying you'll see anything. Just saying it is <laughs> always an option. should be perceptive. Unless well, it, you're me. It does, yeah. <laughs> it hurt Talon. It's like, ah, oh, damn, these uh, headaches. <laughs> Still haven't shook. Oh, he's drunk. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, Hangover. Just, like, I can't open. Which is half drunk. But I think <laughs> Ogar's only real question would be, can I see the money? Uh, the money, I, like I said, we do have the money. We have plenty of it. Um, more even than you've been promised. Um, uh -huh. uh, now, what, what that sounds like you're saying to old Saltbeard is that you have the money, except, you know, you're not planning on us living, or you don't have the money. Oh, oh no, no. We, um, what, if, what if I pay you some now? That would put me somewhat at ease, yes. He, you know, grabs a, oh shit, grabs like a, a pouch at his side and he goes, t -t 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 type of thing and dumps it into another smaller pouch and he hands you a um, hundred gold coins. Is it real? Good enough. That is a good question, Fox. Is when the guy turned around, does Borrowed's character actually like take a bite out of it? <laughs> I mean, yeah, probably, but. That's a very also, copper buckle thing to do, yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah, just kind of things. <laughs> see if it bends. It does, yeah. It seems to be legit. Okay. And you would know because you're used to pawning off shit coins on people. <laughs> oh, exactly. I, I have a pouch full of fake coins already. Yeah. Oh, even even hat. better is the ones with the it's, it's the ones with the chocolate in the middle. Well, I mean, because he handed me a hundred gold coins, I have a pouch with a hundred exactly fake gold coins. It's funny too, uh, Zelfus wasn't here for Nurin Dur Dur Duri, was he? Nurin Duri, I don't know why I was stuttering there. Uh, I don't know if he was. I think he arrived after that. Mm. Um, but, yeah, Borrowed is already 
attempted to pawn off. Um, not and, not for my okay, sorry, but he uh, test people. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're in a thieves guild hideout, then yeah, he's gonna walk in and see how much of a thief you actually are, or if you're just some drunkard that stumbled in. So, what now, gentlemen? We have a proposition. We have some money up front. No shit. I'll say everyone heals um, 1d4 health over a good night's sleep. Which could be good. <coughs> Your horror. Your uh, question, Raffle. Oh my Wait. god. Oh, okay, let's Whoa. let's try this. Roll better than they. <laughs> oh, oh, it's gonna be one of those nights. Oh, borrowed, no, borrowed used up all the crits with his one roll tonight, and this is the track that we have taken. <laughs> Son of a <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate you, borrowed. The best part is that Salty was already at full health. Yeah, you're full health. <laughs> you oh. beep. Uh, but yeah, uh, with the actually, so is Delia. Do your knock? Did we ever establish how much electricity it actually did? on hitting people, or if it was a different use. Ah, interesting. Um... Because I'm trying to get that onto my, uh, my roll 20 sheet. Fair. Sure. It does one... You did actually get... Yeah, that's right. They got the power word for it. So, they we're talking about the axe, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's 1d6. Okay. Lightning damage. E. Cool. Uh... Does ma magical effects not have a critical multiplier? Because it says the base is one. So it depends on your DM, um, but I always go the magic crit when, like, if you crit on an attack, then the magical effect, like, rolls double damage as well. Okay. Just because it's fun. <laughs> kind of sucks when I have a super magic sword! Yeah, but only the sword part crits. Huh? <laughs> you know what I mean? That doesn't feel cool. Well, that's even stupider, though, if you think of it the other direction. The sword crits, the pommel crits, yeah. the cross guard crits, the leather strap to your wrist crits. Yeah. But the huge flame engulfing the blade just does normal damage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. 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 Question, though, for the damage. Mm -hmm. So they have damage, uh, like it's one d twelve for the great axe base plus strength. It would be plus strength two handed, because it's a two handed weapon. Um. Okay, so interesting. I thought two handed is if you take a one handed weapon and use it two handed. But yeah, I'm, I it could know. be could be either. I suppose. Yeah, because uh, I'm pretty sure if you have a weapon. And you're using it two-handed, like if you have a one-handed weapon. Yeah, you get one and a half times strength. Yeah. Yeah. No, go ahead and go ahead and just say it's two-handed. That makes sense okay. to me. So, are we off? Is Copper Buckle satisfied? There's hundred gold pieces. I would say so. So you leave. Who is going to be driving? If you will, um, the horse in the beginning. Do we uh, take turns? Sleeping. Does anyone know how to drive horse? <laughs> this, I was say, that's a better question to be asking here. I uh, have a no. pony. Oh, I have something right. I guess I'll do the first right. Four points. That does not sound at all encouraging. So, unless that's, that's the equivalent in D and D of saying, "All right, dog, sit." Unless the animal is spooked. You're gonna be okay. <laughs> All right, yeah, I, I, I have a three in ride, but apparently, if you're wearing armor, then you're not allowed to ride things. But um, right. So you need training to do that. Yeah, yeah because that that's like ride like riding a horse in armor is like difficult, obviously. But you're in a cart. It's just someone you know, sort of going, right? 
Hmm. Um, either way, so you, you carry along, you get a nice peaceful sleep until the following morning as you're passing through the desert pass and the sand is just stinging you as the wind kicks up. And it's hot as shit, as you would imagine. I'm going to go ahead and just assume the first day everyone's fine. We have plenty of liquids, plenty of water. Everything's okay. In front of you... Well, I'm a reptile, so I'm doing even better. Yeah, you're loving it. <laughs> the, the caravan ahead of you is just sort of... It's taking a slower pace than one might normally. But, again, sort of volatile cargo, right? Any signs of why? Like, are there troubles with the wheels, the animals flagging? The no, flagging? it just, just looks like they're just not um, trying to push it. So, um, you, get, you guys sort of carry along up until the next evening and the following day things again we're going a little bit slow but it's it's still quite toasty and you get to a point so right now we're about here we're in day two of our journey like we're you know hopefully we'll be coming up at the end of the mountain pass soon the, the wind is just bringing all this sand up, stinging your eyes. And I would like perception checks from everybody. Yeah. My other question is... Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. Are we seeing more ghosts? Delia actually sees like a lake. <laughs> uh, in the middle. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, I, there's I, water out there. I, I think that'd be fun for Delight to see a slight mirage at this point. As a quick his natural one. Sal Salty sees sand. Okay. Uh, Zaw is actually. Uh, you do. Kraz. Oh, sorry. Kraz. So Kraz sees um, sort of just at the edge of vision darting in amongst the rocks on the mountain cliffside figures. You got company. How far up are these figures talking? Like, So we're going to say they're like, these are pretty big mountains. Probably 60, 70 feet up and then further away. It, like it would take them ages to get to you, but it it looks like they're sort of following your movements. Now, you do have the benefit of having a horse, which isn't moving much faster than a human could walk right now because you know, you're sort of going for longevity there. But um, you just sort of feel, see them tailing you somewhat. But only Kraz sees these. And he can't Tell speak. <laughs> oh, fuck, I don't remember. He, he no, I was voice. joking. I was joking. Company. Anyway, I just say, in Broadway voice, company. Talon didn't do a perception check, did he? No. Yes, I did. No, he didn't. Did you? Let's try it again. Roll. Nice. Yeah. Oh, you did. Oh. It's okay. Well, you didn't do it through your sheet, anyways, but okay. That's probably what, like a 15? Uh, let's see. His perception. I'm blind. Do they not have perception? Under no, P? There. Oh, there it is. Yeah, no, it's a 15, yeah. So, he would also see them. Okay. You come up um, sort of to an, the next sort of camp spot, which it's actually interesting. As you travel along this road, there's little... It's a road, but every so many miles, you see like a little sort of stake in the ground. Just helping keep track of distance. And then there's sort of like a, a dedicated rest stop, like a truck stop, if you will. But it's just like a cleared out area, a smooth stone place to camp your uh, carts and such for the evening. Now, it's nice to sit and not get uh, sand in your crack. That's right, yeah. It seems this path has been traveled before. As we reach about here, in our second night, ahead of us is a petrified forest of such. 
Um, it's fairly easy to see through it. It's not that the trees are like overly dense and they're all like completely destroyed, right? They're just dried up, but they exist here nonetheless. You hear a few voices on the wind. Now the wind the whole time has been pretty rough because we're in like a, a, a gully. I forget what they're called, like a chasm, right? But, um... Oh. Pits, I should know what that's called. Cleft? I think... A, you may be right, but I don't think that's what a cleft is. But, again, you'd probably be more informed well, than I am. A depression well, in land depends. of any sort. Yes. Like, it's sort of... It's like a U, right? Because <laughs> we... Here's our mountains here. Here's our mountains here. And we're on this part. Declivity? I'm not sure, sorry. But either way, that that's what it is. Um small a valley. Okay. Oh yeah. I mean a valley is usually a larger, like pooled area, but yeah, I'll take valley. Um so we're we're in this this though, and so the wind is now starting to somewhat die down as we're breaking out of it. Still a lot of wind in this area. That's not uncommon for near Angbok, but you hear a few voices. The wind. Any chance of a perception check to determine? Um, yeah. We can discern what kind of language they're speaking. Um. That's a good one. Yeah, actually, you don't need perception for that. You don't really hear whole words, but it does sound common. Hmm. So how long has the noise been going on for? Um, you only noticed it when you set up to camp. Are these noises coming from the cliff tops or from further into the valley? Further this way. Hmm. So out in the desert proper. That's what it it sounds like. At least further down the path from you. Now, I will say, at no point, not even during the night, as the caravan ahead of you uh, allowed you to gain too much distance on it, which is usually about a good 30 feet ahead of you. Well, if we're time. hearing voices on the wind, we should probably pick up the pace to close the distance if they may be under threat. Probably don't want to be 30 feet away when the action starts. Okay. Um, so right now, like, you're both camps, but, so, like, you want to, like, maybe go up and, and talk to one of them? That's my plan. Okay, so as Talon approaches the caravan, um, go ahead and make a, a will save for me. <laughs> sand check. Exactly, exactly. Wait. The D&D sand uh, check. Strength dex, call him in whiz, charisma. We'll, there we go. Perfect. So you feel a sickly feeling. It's like something drops in your stomach. But no ill effects of it. Unfortunately, it sounds like there's voices coming. Caravan. All right, let's notify the rest of the party that things have gone rather wrong. I mean, I need them up here now. Is it more than two voices? <laughs> Um, there's, ooh, there's a, sounds like a couple, but they're quite muffled. Um, one of the dwarves sort of looks over, like, they're both kind of, like, napping, taking turns, but one of them looks over and sees you, hops off and says, oh, <laughs> yes, of course, it's the nervous one from before. He just lucked out that way. Uh, <laughs> adventurers, um, the journey's gone great so far, no, no signs of bandits, I, I assume. Uh, hmm. Uh, question for you. Yes. How many slaves are you transporting? <laughs> so, so, um, slaves. Uh, uh, he <laughs> begins sweating profusely. <laughs> I assure you, I I don't know what you're speaking about. Um, uh, we're, we're, uh it's volatile cargo. Uh, um. It's volatile cargo that speaks. 
a, a casket, um, a casket of souls trapped. We're taking it to be laid to rest. Now, you see, I've got a cousin, he's more like an uncle, who works for the Dark Watch. I know a thing or two about caskets. The only time a casket's speaking is because it's a phylactery and you're carrying shit for a fucking lich. Be right back, sorry. He, um, you know, stares at you. Um, I, I sure, I, I, um, I, I too, um, you know, have, have, have family in, in the, 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 the grave diggers. I wouldn't joke about such a thing. And he pats the gun at his, his side. <laughs> I pat the larger gun at my side. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I won't go in, but you open that back door and you let me see that it's a casket and not people. And we'll call it a night. I, um, uh, of course, of course, um, that that's fair. You, you should know what cargo you're helping move. He goes to the the back door and he knocks in, in a curious fashion. There's a pause and he says, and um, here you go. And he opens the back door and there is nothing to be seen except a large, could be a coffin shape. All right, Stealthy's gonna not, he's not gonna step into the caravan, but he's gonna wave his hand across the threshold to see if it's an illusion. Just just kind of you know, stick his hand in there and Ooh, see if it's your hand does just through. You can see sort of like your fingers do that telltale illusiony sign of just being semi transparent. You pass through the threshold. Keep my hand in there and just kind of turn my head. <laughs> About that casket. I, the souls are angry tonight. I go behind the, the door. And if I was to put you in there with the souls, would the souls be angry? <laughs> I've, I'd rather not find out. We, we, and if I was to look past your little illusion here. Th th there's burial rites that, that you can't get too close. You'll upset them. Their family's paid quite a bit of money to um, get the the which, casket. Which family would this be? Um, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, I grab still... the door. <laughs> can I drive, Can I grab the door from basically just stare? Then I just say, "Slave or not?" <laughs> and... uh, give me an intimidate check. Uh... I feel like Zaz is probably pretty good at. I'll give you a plus four to it though, because okay. Oh fuck! You did. Oh, Salty's, Salty's horrible at charisma, so you didn't quite crack him. Um, so he's like, I, I, I assure you, that I wouldn't carry a slave. Um, it's illegal on top of morally being wrong. I show him my, my basically uh, tattoo. I was slave. Don't bullshit me. Basically. Oh, I'm I'm very sorry to hear that, Sir Lizard. But inside, I carry only only the dead, and um, this casket of souls I mentioned. If I find that right. slave, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> Straight and up. I just drop some. Okay. I just drop some. So if I had one of them to put a finger on my shoulder, detect magic on this, they would see what? Um, a protective barrier. Um, some maybe maybe some necromancy to lock it in. That's all. Um, t t now tell we you just what. Said it's not a lich. And now you're saying there's necromancy. Uh, but purely to speak with the dead, calm them, M music to soothe their souls. 
Um, allow me to get my companion. Uh, he he knows much more about it. He's part of the church himself. So he he wanders over to the front of the cart. Yeah, did, did he ever manage to stutter out the name of the family? Because it sounded like he was trying to say it was the Steel Grips. He didn't manage to quite stutter it out before he got intimidated. Well, he said steal something. Well, he started to, maybe. I can't say. I'm merely your eyes and ears of the world. I'm not a book to be read. <laughs> but you do hear the telltale sign, the cracking whip. And the caravan is off. <laughs> I'm going to jump in that back <laughs> door. Oh, you're going to have to give me I'm going in. You're going to have to give me an athletics check, boy. I'm making room for it, too. I mean, I feel like Zaz could fucking haul ass. Yeah, there is no athletics. Remember, they removed it. Oh, what? What do they call it now? I hate there's, that. There's acrobatics, but that's not the same thing. That's not the same thing. So I'm going to make it either... Dex? <sighs> um, okay, so the old athletic check. I swear it used to... Okay, let's say maybe... I kind of want to go with, like, I do kind of want to go with Dex. I feel like that makes sense right now. Because you're sort of reacting to it. Oh, that's fine. Are you back, um, Talon? Yep, I am now. Oh, great. Um, so let's do a quick recap. Where did you bow out when we were intimidating? Uh, he, was asking about, he was asking about slaves. Right. How borrowed was. Right. Okay. So Zaz picked him up. Were you there for that? Shook him around a bit? No. Okay, so Zaz picked up the dwarf, shook him, and got an incredible intimidation that was perfectly timed to cut the gentleman off from releasing the name of who paid him to do this. Of course, they're delivering not slaves, but a casket of souls to the church. Um, <laughs> the other thing that, that happened... Him. <laughs> That's right, Fox says him. The other thing that happened was he said he was going to get his compatriot, who knows a lot more about magic and can explain the whole rites and the rituals and the churchy shit. Uh, and then he, he hopped on front and cracked the whip, and they're off. And right now, we're going to attempt to see if Copperbuckle or Raz can jump Raz. in the back. Sorry for calling you Zaz. Whoa, buddy! <laughs> now, you were saving that. All right, so knowing my luck, I'm not going to make it, but to try and help me make it, I'm going to hit you with this idea, Raffle. Okay. You're going to try and has... rocket jump? <laughs> no, no. Salty has a couple of boarding axes. Okay. And boarding axes, I have having the usual axe held in the front. They have a spike on the back of it. Right, because they're meant for... circumstance bonus on wood, ice, or other penetrable surface for trying to climb. Yeah, because you're so if I, if you I used to climb up, up a ship. The door, and... Yeah, if I fuck up on getting in the door, then maybe I can, like, just slam it. Okay, so I thing. was going to actually... Um, I was going to make this quite a difficult check. So, just sort of smoke and mirrors moment. We're going to break the immersion, the fourth wall. But this was going to be a DC-20 to get in. Oh. Okay. Now, Kraz made it. Fucking beast. I will say it's a, it, for you, it's a 15 to get your axes into it. And then you can either pull yourself up because you're quite strong or Kraz can obviously give you a hand. Unfortunately, this leaves us with a problem. Shit's about to get real. Talon and Delia are, of course, well, watching we'll the scene. If he's going to be there with them or not. Okay. <laughs> well, then, that there's a 19. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> you, and then the axes. You don't need the, uh, technically need the axes, but I really like the idea of that. So Salty leaps, and he's not quite fast enough with his little stubby dwarf legs. He just leaps at it and sinks an axe into the fucking, like, back of this wagon and pulls himself in. So I'm just going for the driver. So the two of you, the well, you're in, you're in a closed caravan. Okay, so we'll talk about this scene in just a minute, but let's go ahead. Um, I'm actually, I'm using a lot of purple, so let's change it up just so we know what we're dealing with here. 
Perfect. So here's us. I knew it. That's the front. Well, it's a U-Haul. <laughs> no, <laughs> what? <laughs> what I was thinking was like, all right, we got purple. Now if we get gold, he's going to go for Laker purple and gold. Watch. <laughs> uh, no, sorry, Mr. Talon. Unless yeah, you would that, th with that agility roll, that's not going to happen. No. Dexterity. <laughs> so you manage to take like eight steps after the <laughs> cart, and then you're like, eh, fuck it. it. Starts huffing and puffing. So the the whips cracked. The caravan goes off, and Kraz just fucking like leaps in the back of it, just lands his feet perfectly, and right after Copper Rockle jumps and sinks his axe and gets pulled in. The two of you are now past the threshold. We're going to deal with that in just a minute. Talon and I, I Delia. Have an idea as well. But. Talon and Delia are just staring. Now Talon did make like the the mock sort of run after it. No, wait! But you just see the caravan tearing off into the distance. Well, looks like run foot from here on in. Be the, the, the other guy. dwarf there too. We still oh, yeah, have the other still. guy. The other guy was asleep on the ground. Did he fucking leave him behind? No, no, he was asleep in the cart. I, I thought you said they were both resting against the side of the cart. Oh, like, sorry, like the side of the driver's thing. Uh, Wait, we still have the other one, though, right? Yeah. You do, yeah, you have the other cart, yeah. Oh, yeah, Delia would basically be, like, motioning towards that, towards, oh, with Talon, say, like, let's just use that to go after them. Sounds like a plan. Um, bad news bears. So you two are... Walking or running? Describe the scene to me. You're down a dirt road heading towards the cart. What do you What do you mean? Like, I was saying to go get the the thing that we were riding in before. Right. So, um, just for simplicity's sake, we'll call it the caravan and the cart, so we know which is which. The cart is the little one, um, that you arrived in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is this is your cart, if you will. Sorry for that being a little messy. Well, I say we get the cart and go, because being on foot, there's no chance in hell we'll catch up, let alone if they get to Trotstam ahead of us and disperse. Then it's like, well, now we're playing Find Our Friends and These Assholes. So, so. I, I would just like to hear the scene of either Talon or Delia. One of you can describe it. But your characters are walking? Are they running? Are they jogging? Running to it. Running so you're, to it. You're just tearing off towards the cart. Okay. Yeah. As, as you the, do so. The drop... The animals for it is still there, the draft animals, right? Yep. Okay, I did. I'm, I was for a second, I was like, oh shit, I'm going to have to use my idol on to carry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's Wait, super oh, no. cool. I love that idea. Um, it is quadrupedal, and I would like to see if it's possible for it to help out. If not, if the rigging's not for it, I totally get saying no. You know what? I love that, and this is not how the scene was going to play out, but it is now. So as you, you two are sort of. Like, just start running. I assume because, you know, Talon starts to run off and then stops. Talon and Delia just share a moment where they just look at each other and they're like, oh, fuck. Like, you know what I mean? They just start, like, you know, the cart, right? And they run at the cart. Um, at that moment, six arrows whiz past you. One of them fucking just embeds itself in one of your horses of the cart. Can I get a location on that arrow impact? Uh, it's ahead. The horse is fucking dead. The horse is fucking dead. All right, Delilah, get up on the get up onto the. Oh, I forgot the name for the the, the where they sit. The, the driver sit. Oh yeah, no, I, no. I have the seat. Whatever you want to call uh, it. Driver's seat. I'm gonna detach the now dead horse. I'm gonna use my idle on to move us. Hold okay, on. Okay, so you were getting shot at from the south. Maybe that matters. Maybe it doesn't. But I love this. So you conjure the Eidolon as the cart begins to move. and yeah, last, Lashing it up and using my will to move it. Um, and then <laughs> as this moves by, hoping to hop up into the carriage. If I miss the step here, I'm happy with landing in the bed of it and then shooting a spell back. Okay. So we're going to pause this scene. You guys have taken off after. Uh, Delia, give me a ride check. Um, oh, just saying. Handle animal will also maybe work, whichever. Oh, Jesus. Just, just saying, when Zelfos was telling Delia to get up in the bed, I thought he was going to try and make some like shitty action movie thing, like, get on the bed, man the gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man the gun! <laughs> she, um, just, she takes out her bow. Wrong, tech, wrong techno level. 
<laughs> just shitting magic missiles out into the hillside. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I probably should have done hand by animal because I have more points on that. Okay. It still wouldn't have been a good roll, though. Um, but Talon, you know, you just managed to get the idol on rigged after detaching the other one. This thing's going off. And Delia just fucking hits like a bad rock, and you go like tumbling backwards into the cart. Now you are in the cart. How much damage? Uh, <laughs> we'll just say you just took one point. It wasn't too bad. Fair enough. The, the ever popular point of stupid damage. That's right. The point of like, oh. Uh... <laughs> so you are Don't tearing make off. Their potion. <laughs> oh yeah, you've got that potion. Yeah, you're not going to give it to him now, are you? No. Like, oh, no, later. That would be funny. Hey, this is really important. Drink this potion. You'll be out for four fucking hours. <laughs> 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 Maybe not a good time. So Delia is, you know, in charge. Now let's shift scenes. Um, our two adventurers have just caught their breath, and then they're in the back of a really fast-moving carriage. Um, extremely fast. It feels like the horses are being pushed well and beyond what they should be. Oh, I'm trying to get... Does I'm anyone want to guess what you see in front of you? Slaves. So, it is pitch black, but I think you both have dark vision, right? I, I think... know I at least do. The dwarf does. Oh, actually, I don't think Zaz does have dark vision. I don't. I don't think so. Okay, so you can't see anything. So right now, unfortunately, Copper Buckle has to break the news to you. He sort of turns to Kraz and he says, well, I, don't, I don't know how you would say it. I'm not going to take oh your no, line. Mr. Oh Frodo. no, Mr. Frodo! <laughs> <laughs> um, a bunch of children. Oh, I'm my neighbor. I'm just enraged. <laughs> Berserker rage Berserker. just starts cleaving Berserker through rage. them. <laughs> not exactly I saw that was... <laughs> Bot's going. No, no. Um, okay. I'm going to go onto the caravan and wait. Basically wait, stop before it. you try and go clambering across the tunnel, to your I'm, death. I'm... Okay, he's enraged. Uh, give I'm me enraged give, and what? give me a climb yeah, check. One second. Is there bars or something at the front of the caravan so the caravaneers can see inside? No. So you can just tear those asunder. No, there's not. Feels closed in. In fact, you feel not only do you feel unwell, like at the scene, because it's a bunch of like just shittily clothed, obviously, you know, sort of roughed up children, various races. Um, you'll notice the vast majority of them are elves, for whatever reason. But the mm. the big issue right here is something feels bad about this room, like a like a spider sense, if you will. Uh, but yes, absolutely, I love it. So Kraz goes ahead and he just fucking like bestial yells, I'm sure. And yeah, uh, he's sure. enraged. And you're climbing up on top. Give me a climb check. You also get a plus two because you're enraged right now. Uh, okay, well, while he's doing that, I have an idea. How thick are the floorboards on this van? Holy yeah. shit, Kraz is on top. He's on top, and so what are you doing? You're just like climbing along the top I'm of this caravan. I'm to the front, and I'm going to um, chomp on uh, Mr. Nervous Face heads off. Okay, cool. Um, so you're oh, going to do, you're gonna gonna do a bite, bite attack? His fucking head off. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to bite his head off. Like I said, he's the first one to die. Okay, I like that. Um, let us. Shit, I didn't. Oh, here I'm going to use this these guys for the dwarves. I forgot to get a picture. <laughs> get a picture for them. There, those are our two dwarves. <laughs> Apologies. One of them is okay. going to ship yeah. So, how, how thick are these floorboards, though? Um, you're trying to break through them. Uh, not quite. Okay. Not in mind. Uh, they're. Um, if we're talking mechanically, thicker than they seem, but okay, now... they don't appear to copper buckle to be overly thick. You know what I mean? Like maybe like a couple deck boards on top of each other or something. Okay. Now I have an idea. Is there any sort of open space in here for me to swing or 
is shit fucked. Like it's just packed to the gills. It's pretty packed. Um, there's like twenty five kids. Okay, well then that's Plan B then. Plan B would be to. Eh, what do I really have to work with? Okay, you know what? We'll go with that. So, I'm going to take a couple of uh, pittons, put them through the chain on the back of my anchor, slam them into the deck board, and just toss the fucking anchor out the back door. I love that. Um, okay. Let's see. Because if there's this a rock sounds or like something... an amazing idea, and I, l I want to see how this plays out. Mm. Oh my god! Beautiful. Beautiful. Um... <laughs> well, things certainly do continue to get interesting. Let's say that much. Let's describe our scene. We have Kraz rushing across the top deck, going for the guy. Let's say you've, you've got to him. Make a bite attack. Let's see how that goes off. Behind trailing, we have Delia at the reins. We have Talon, you know, sort of scouting out the cart. Touching on for dear life in the back as I look around. That's right. Dodging arrow fire coming from the mountains. And inside, we have Copperbuckle, who implants a pitten and whips his fucking telltale anchor out the back. Delia, give me a ride check. Or handle animal. Whichever. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, and then Talon, go ahead and give me a uh, either strength or acrobatics, whichever you're feeling. A reflex, actually. Give me a reflex. That's perfect. That's, the, that's exactly what I want. Beautiful. Beautiful. That was close. Well, um, half of the caravan stops moving. <laughs> 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 the caravan is just ripped in half, and half of it carries back. Oh, the copper buckle, thankfully, was anchored in place, pun intended. But uh, Delia is like, oh, fuck. <laughs> it just like whips the reins, and the horses just get around it in time. Um, maybe the Eidolon has something to do with that. And Talon seeing it's like, oh, shit, right? Like dodges, grabs onto the fucking sides of the cart, like gets careened sideways, but you're still going. And, um, of course, the caravan is dragging. Small children are just, like, falling out of the fucking back of it. <laughs> well, thankfully, sand oh, is sorry. relatively soft. Like, they're not landing on That's asphalt. right. That's right. You, you were going pretty quick at the time, though. And Zaz, yeah. yeah. They're going to get some, like, rug burn. But... Sorry, Kraz. You want to give me that, uh, that bite and see how that goes off before everything goes to shit? Uh, maybe I could do an agility save, probably. Yeah, you probably could. Jesus, that's pretty nom, good. Nom, 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 uh, and I'm Is there angry. a bonus on that because he's angry? Um, yeah, he would get a plus, I think it's plus, well, plus four strength, so plus two damage. That'd be nine. Um, that's pretty fucking and good. And 17 because plus two. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually going to go ahead and say, just for the scene, um, give, me a, give me a strength check there. As. Again, <laughs> reminder, you do a plus two to that. Natural. <laughs> so as as the cart is be as the caravan's being ripped in half, fucking Zaz just like runs in front of it, chomps down on this guy's head as he's like, oh fuck! And just like rips back and the guy's head just like fucking rips off his neck. <laughs> So you, have a, you have a dwarf head just in your mouth right now. The other dwarf, of course, is like, oh, shit! <laughs> like, and it's the, like a fucking Lego figure. Just the that's right. <laughs> um, just... the, and so this dwarf falls out of the cart at that point and sort of spins and rolls off. Who's about here? Um, I, I try as... Hmm. Well, I mean, it's not very hard to make horses stop. Like, just pull the fucking ropes. Yep. Like, just pull them backwards. You're, you're not trying to steer them. Just fucking stop, you idiots. Well, I guess I, I pull the horses to a You stop do have and... handle animal. Grass. I think so. I think you could probably, like, whisper to them. Pull the reins. Oh, maybe, maybe not that good. Okay. 
well, maybe he doesn't know how to speak horse either. He only knows how to speak lizard. <laughs> That's true. So the horse, um, they do eventually stop, but it puts you a slight distance away. Uh, I try to make a, I'm trying to make a run for it too. Uh, okay. To the guy. So we'll say because Kraz is so fast, he's actually twice as fast as Copper Buckle, full like sprint. Um, we'll say you all could arrive around the same time. Now, Delia and Talon have the benefit of being in a drawn carriage, albeit under arrow fire. So what's our plan? This guy, of course, is just trying to book it. Just running. Uh, I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to just cap capture him. Okay. In what uh, way? Like you're gonna try and just like bull rush him or grab him or uh grapple probably like try to pin him down and probably just seeing it as he see sees me just rip his friend's head off say like if you don't wanna if you don't want to end up like your friend, don't do anything stupid. Okay, well he keeps running but he's a dwarf so he's not that fast. And he's gonna turn around and fire um like he's running through these shitty petrified trees now. And fire off a shot with a crossbow at you. Uh, well I think that misses though, you do have pretty good AC. Uh right, uh Yeah, so I missed you. By fair yeah. fair amount. Um, so you do you do manage to like sort of leap on him. You've got him pinned. Copper buckles now there, and Delia and Talon can pull up the cart should they choose. Yep. Um, Delia would just like be gathering children actually. Okay, that's fair actually. Um, probably confused somewhat. But yeah, uh, gathering gathering all the children into a big pile so they can get shot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> How does she go from being a mother of mercy to an execution executioner? <laughs> Holy shit. Stand against the wall. <laughs> is, Don't look at me, turn around. That's right. Is this, uh, is, like, is this like, um, have any protective aspect to it, the cart? Yeah, I'd say if you were, like, if a child was standing behind it or if you were crouched behind it, you wouldn't be able to get hit by arrows. So she would just be gathering them and putting them behind that to try and protect them. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, you... I'd, I'd say we're well enough away from the mountains. Like, unless they're firing fucking ballista at us, we're good. No, yeah, I'd, I'd say you're you're mostly in the in the clear. There's just like the few odd shots, sort of tapering off, more like like fuck you shots. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> just arcing the bow back at like seventy degrees. Just, eh, That's hit right. You. <laughs> So um, I'll delay over here then with the, the childers. I'm gonna go oh, ahead the and be, them the chins. Kids, well, the kids are gonna be super afraid because you just see a big fuck on this web just blood drenching this uh to his mouth to his chest. <laughs> yeah. So are we? What are we about here? Um. Okay. Yeah. I'll say. I'll say that's fair. I was just kind of moving the card out of the way because it looked a little messy. Okay. But so you two have engaged this fellow. You guys are a little bit in the woods. Let's say uh, you're about like here. No, just because you chased him off the road a bit. About, about that, I say. All right. So did Kraz manage to pin this guy? Like yeah. tackle him? Or? Yeah, Kraz, Kraz like, has his boot on his chest or however you want to be standing. Um, basically... My face is right next to his, in the back of his head. Okay. Just, just intimidation, basically. <laughs> you want to talk about intimidation? Just walk up, just fucking put the barrel of the blunderbuss against his face. <laughs> oh, I like it. Give me one reason. <sighs> hundred bucks, you don't. Or hundred gold, sorry. Broke more. A <laughs> hundred bucks. And I don't kill you now. Hundred bucks, you don't kill me. That's all I got. <laughs> Move the barrel slightly away from his face and just dump it into the fucking sand next to him. 
Oh, all right. <laughs> Are you going to slowly reload it too while staring at him? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, just... just Give me an intimidation plus five. Oh, so I'll be shit at intimidation because it's stupid. Your intimidation's only off your charisma, not like your strength or anything else. Well, yeah, but but again, then you get scenes like this where you're using your strength to in reinforce that, and I'm sort of going with it, you know what I mean? Hmm. Bam. So, nice. Yeah, he's, you know, um, you smell the telltale signs of dwarven shit, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Uh, all right, I'll give you, I'll give you uh, all we got. I'll give you the full, full amount for for taking us there. Mm-hmm. As of now. Now. How about you give me that gold, and I won't kill you before we get back to Angbok, and you could be hanged for your crimes. Now think about this. Right. I don't think you really want to be making an enemy of anybody. So, don't know this door. the other 800 gold, and we both just walk. You won't see me again. Well, I'm growling and saying I don't care for money. Uh, why? Just why with the slaves? There's a big buyer. Trots them. I don't ask questions. Oh, one sec. Sorry about that. Cat strikes back. Now let's Kaylin go in the bed. <laughs> All right, you have a friend in Trotstrom, but how about this? How about I just give you to them? folks up in the mountains there who didn't seem too happy. He, uh, looks off towards the mountains. What, f- what folks in the mountains? The bandits? They're just stories, right? Mm-hmm. Well, looking at my friend's cart there, your cart, which is covered in arrows, you tell me. Oh. I'm as confused as you are. What say you? 800 gold, and I'll walk. Uh, can I basically punch him to make him unconscious? Okay, yeah, um, you can do that for sure. Yeah, I'm almost, so I'm almost scared of a crit. Are you want me to actually? Okay. Uh, no, you, you don't. You don't have it. to. You don't have to roll it. Oh, wait, you, even if him punching him didn't knock him out, then I've got a sap, and I'd gladly go at this guy with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's fine. So you, you knock him out. Mm-hmm. And I tie him up and basically carry him with me. Okay. I'm having none of this bullshit. Are you using hemp rope or silk rope? Uh... Okay, uh, because I think that's the only one I got. All right, um, but that's, that's still fine enough. So you you cart him off, bring him back. I assume to the wreck caravan and the cart and such. Mm-hmm. What now? Because that was kind of the job. <laughs> A bit <laughs> awkward. <laughs> I want to kill the guy who. Um... Who basically did all this? Who basically ordered all these slave children? Well, we don't Salty's know who he is. Kinda, Salty's kind of got some Jack Sparrow with him. Just slaves aren't cargo, mate. Yeah, people want cargo. Like, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I like it. So, you know, like, I think Salty's gonna try and see. Well, if any of the kids are old enough to really be talk talking, not just. Because they're, what, like four, five? How old are these kids? Yeah, quite young. Uh, one of them, it, some of them are older, like eight, nine. Um, but even even the oldest ones don't speak. You only find one that, that can actually speak at this point. Hmm. They, like, well, they like, just like, still like, had... Sorry? 
What language do they speak? Um, well, she speaks Elven, but that's not a problem. <laughs> All right, well, Salty can't try and be Santa because he doesn't understand a fucking lick of Elven, so I'm going to look over at Knife Ears or the human, just, uh, I'll hand that to you. Uh, the elves use it like uh, trees, right? And yeah. I do, I, do, I do have the necklace for the goddess of, was it nature? Uh, Saliti, yeah. Yeah. So basically, I uh, unravel that that was on my tail and it gives one of the children after I clean my face from blood. Um. So if you hand it to an elven child, you see them sort of, um, like almost recoil away from it. Lizard, like the... lizard, bad, bad, bad. Well, I just chuck it, man. Okay. Huh? <laughs> what? Wait, <laughs> what are you, <laughs> hold it, what are you throwing? It's, it's um, a holy symbol, It's a holy symbol, Sledia. Oh, thank God, for a second I misunderstood. I thought you thought he was chucking the child, the child. yeah. You know, you know talk for it? <laughs> <laughs> Ready, I can kick the baby. That's right, go kick the baby. <laughs> oh, um. Try and comfort the children as best I can. Then. So, so what are you saying then, Delia? Anything? Um. Well, she would be trying to comfort them, you know, as best she can. I don't know what to say. <laughs> say to the one that can talk. Well, first of all, I'm going to take the chains off. Oh yeah, are, are they clamped in irons or are they tied up or? No, they're. It, like they might have had small bindings on their hands for like the more rambunctious kids, but aside from that, they mostly just seem like they're kept in line with fear. Uh the she um, I basically tried to remove the. I think Delilah would have probably been doing that while you guys were hunting down. Oh, yeah, the yeah she, she looks at um salty, and says, "You know, an Elvin, are are you gonna hurt us?" Delia would just answer you and say, "No, dear child." Where, where are we going? At this point, I don't know. Actually, ask where they came from. That's a good question. Where are you from? Where? I don't remember where home is, but. I remember a big harbor. I think a lot of us came from an island. So I guess we're going to have to look for missing child posters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, harbor, big island, guild knock, then, eh? It's possible. Um, why don't you give me perception checks? Is there anything you're looking for in particular amongst the wreckage and or the children? Uh, seeing if they have like markings on them, you know. Yes, but... they do well, he's actually. Perceptive. Uh, Delay is often perceptive. I've noticed. <laughs> uh, well, salty, like the kids are being taken care of, so salty is primarily going to be looking for that gold because he's still suspicious about it. Ah, nice. I like it. Okay. Um, you managed to find in the wreckage a. A hidden floorboard, if you will. Like um, I forget what you call those, but you know the ones you lift up. A fake floorboard. Uh, yeah, sacred compartment. Yes. Um, and inside it, there's 500 gold coins, as well as um, like evidence of some burnt parchment or some such like that. Um. Anyway, all the children bear. A um, a mark on them like a like a brand, and we're gonna say, mm, nope, not liking that. I say it looks like this. That's pretty fun. A duck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's that? Mm, just adding to it. It's a fish now. Oh God. We're, we're playing that game, are we? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not playing Pictionary. Uh, I, 
I basically um, look at the light line and say, what's this marking? Um, Delilah doesn't know. Well, you... gesturing so Delilah can ask the child. Oh. Who gave you this mark? Um, a man. Um, I don't remember his name. I I only remember he was really scary, and he was missing one of his fingers. She would be telling the group, of course, what, what she's saying, like she'd been uh, translating it. Just in case they have any insight. Would Talon have any insight onto where that mark could come from? Yeah, like would that be a knowledge, knowledge history check or a knowledge uh, arcane check? Which would it be? Actually, you know what? Knowledge arcana is pretty good right now. I was trying to think if you would have something applicable, I'll give you that one. Oh shit, all it says is Religion, plans, nobility, nature, local oh, history, is, geography. Oh, I thought Arcane uh, was one. Oh, Arcana, got it. Okay, sorry. Beautiful. So, yes. It's, it's an old... Um, essentially, imagine if you were reading another language's textbooks. Just a symbol for a school of magic. Any ideas to which particular school? Um... It's a school that isn't really recognized anymore. Sort of like they, they condensed it and it's been removed. But it, it had, it's like, it's so like old magic we're talking. But um, one dealing with ritual and um, like sort of strength and stuff like that. Um, Does it happen to involve human sacrifice? Yeah, I suppose, yeah. Uh, definitely human sacrifice would be part of that. Um, the idea of, like, transferring energy, that kind of stuff. Hmm. Oh, do you happen to? Uh, she would ask if she know she knows what um, the pier was that they were at. If if she knows it, or what the name of the boat was, or any of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, that's that's good. I like that. Um, let's see, she's she's like thinking really hard. She's like, I rem I remember. Uh, a loud bell, and a man, uh, a dwarf, yelling over and over, uh, Harbor 7, Harbor 7. I can't really remember anything else. I think What's someone, that? sorry? Go ahead. I don't know. I was just gonna say, does that ring a bell to anyone? <laughs> well, I mean, Guildnock and Angbok both have fair-sized harbors. Mm. But Guildnock is the only uh, city I... that you know of to have multiple harbors. True. Does it have a bell? Um, like the, I guess there'd be like guys in posts, like little guard towers that sort of direct traffic, if you will. Um, Guildnock is sort of split up in the several like districts of the city. So Harbor Seven would be a harbor there. And we could probably go ask the book be who keeps track of ships going in and out. What were you gonna say? Because I interrupted. Oh, I I remember um, there was a the head of the boat. Um, it was carved into like a giant reddish, sick looking uh, eel. Uh, 
yeah, none of this means anything to her. So she'd be explaining it to you guys to see if it, you know, means anything to you. Mm. Uh, another another check for him. Oh, that's interesting. Um, that would be dungeoneering. Well, technically, like survival dungeoneering, it would be your underworld contacts type of idea. Well, there's that, but I was thinking, what about just profession sailor, like actually knowing the boat, not necessarily. Yes, you know what? I like that a lot too. Yeah, yeah, profession sailor. Oh, no. like you well, have like a I'm... huge bonus in that. I have a fuck huge bonus in that. Yeah, copper buckles like. Well, I've heard of many eel boats, <laughs> like, you know, but nothing really come to your head, specifically one with a, a reddish, sick looking eel at the head of it. Um, side note, what is that called? You know, they uh, sometimes figurehead. said figurehead. Thank you. I knew it was something head, but I couldn't remember. Thank you. So that's all. Um, copper buckle, of course, you're looking at the, the, the open floorboard and yeah, 600 gold and, or 500 gold, sorry. 500 gold and then your destroyed parchment of some kind. Can that be repaired? Uh, do we have anyone with mend? Uh, yes. So <laughs> well, I think, I think the both of them do. Uh, uh, question: The lie doesn't work. Through both of the the dead and living dwarf's pockets, because the dead dwarf had money on him. That's he's yes. gave me the hundred gold to begin with. Mm -hmm. He has another two hundred gold on him. All right, the dead guy does. What about the living guy? Living guy doesn't have anything except he has a a ring on one of his fingers with um. Just sort of an odd series of runic symbols. Hmm. Uh, it's dwarven. Taking that. Taking that. And when translated, reads protection. I don't think that worked that well for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it protected him from dying, getting thrown off the cart, but... <laughs> yeah, that's right. So is Talon going to go mend those papers? I can try, but this spell really doesn't work very well with me, so let's hope. Well, you uh, did that door that. pretty good. Yeah, but again, that's... Mm, Alright. Mending what? Oh, I probably what? just never... This is concentration. Yeah. Well, I don't think I put the, oh, the spell okay, description in. Dude. I'll just roll for it. You don't have to oh, roll wait. for it. Yeah, it's fine. fine. Do you even have to roll for mending? You it's a don't. Trip? No. Oh, oh, um, I thought I had to roll. Okay, so, so you don't... Like, so you're, you're just I'm concentrating sorry. on the item that you want to fix, then? Mm -hmm. The okay. thing is, if it's destroyed, which it is, you're going to require a... I believe it's like a spellcraft check or something like that. Um, but we'll say if you make like a DC 10, so should be able to... And even if he fails that, when we get back to Angbok or Guildnock or whatever, I'm sure they'll have scribes. Yes. Oh, actually. Um, okay, I like this, but yeah. Uh, see if you can give me a spellcraft check there. Mr. Zelfus. That would be d20 plus uh, 6 for you. Alright. d20 roll. Oh. Well, plus Damn six, you just made it, so... <laughs> really? Yeah, you got you got quite a hefty skill bonus because of your intelligence and stuff. Um, but anyway, so Talon's sitting there, and I'm going to say it takes you a long time to do it. Because you're slowly performing a ritual and piecing together, like, basically a, a destroyed parchment. Um, jigsaw puzzle. Yeah, so but Talon's sitting there, and over the course of, like, half an hour... He slowly, like, magically builds back together this paper. Now, some of the ink has been lost, it, it appears. However, um, the ink that was lost, it was just Talon was having a little bit of trouble concentrating, and it floated up somewhat into the air. And Salty gets a distinct smell of a precious metal. <laughs> Which would be gold. Mm. 
Either way, um, the only really discernible, you, you just see sort of a cargo itinerary. Um, and in fact, the slaves are numbered more so than they are named. Um, you know, it, it like 678, 679, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it does start at 678. And it goes up to whatever 25 on 678 is, so uh, 93, something like that, right? 103, uh, 703. 703. So 60, 678 to 703. Those are your um, the numbers on there. It has a payment, and it says, um, you know, something along the lines of 900 gold up front, like, you know, 2,000 gold when you arrive. And um, there's a name at the very bottom. Signed, Themic Leddelver. Sorry. Signed who, Leddelver? Themic. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, after Salty's done looking about that kind of crap, he's going to, before I suggest what we do next, going to take the ring over to the two mages and be like, Hey, the living guy had a ring. What's it do? It says protection. And it's a spellcraft from Delia. Because she's like a super spell crafter. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Damn. Ring of protection plus one. Okay. Go, go Fox. Yep, <laughs> I'm not even going to beat around the bush with that one. <laughs> she's like, oh, I used to practice on these. <laughs> like, you know, I used to craft those out on the weekends for fucking, you know, just shits and giggles. <laughs> That's right, yeah. All right. Well, that salty bleak keeping a hold of that. He doesn't like magic, but if the magic makes him less likely to be dead, he might make exceptions. He's going to slip it on one of his two ring fingers. Uh, we'll put it on the right hand one. He likes that hand more. Okay, so go ahead and increase your AC by one. Yeah. Uh, I'll look at the stats for that later. Right. I believe it's natural, natural AC. Yeah, but I mean, like, it's uh, it's value weight. Oh, sure. yeah, no problem. All right. Well, since we're done with that, if nobody else has suggestions, Salty would say, let's turn this piece of shit back and go to Angbark. I agree. Well, I, no, yeah, we, gotta, we have to find these kids somewhere. We can't just keep moving. So, good so luck. Go back, though, aren't there the bandits? Yeah, and you've got 25 kids in a cart that sits four uncomfortably. How am I walking? I'll carry some of the kids, too. Okay. You can't okay. mend the carriage, right? Oh. We do have both halves of it. I, you know what? I love that. Shit. Let me, I mean, <laughs> hang on. Pathfinder, mending. I want to see specifically this spell. <laughs> I think that is possible. I like that idea. This is horrifying. Um, it's great. What are you talking about horrifying? So unfortunately, it only affects one object of up to one pound per level. So they would be able to mend two pounds yeah. each. No, no, no. Could Delia they... doesn't have mending. Uh, okay, well, could they slowly put it back together then? Like, over the course of... I'll say the over the course of, like, a day, you could. Uh, well, I mean, we have our provisions and the, now, half of the dwarves' provisions. I think we could keep the kids out here for a little bit, go find some shade in the dead forest. Yeah, now, to speed that up... 
Um, you could probably also cut down some of these trees and just do some manual mending okay. and just mend like the important things, like the wheels and the spokes. Wheels, spokes, axle. Yeah. Also, is there anything like magical about um, that broken carriage that we should be worried about? Ah. There are two things. Number one is we already know there's a way to activate an illusion of a hearse art type deal. Number two, there is a um, some sort of field inside of it that makes things more complacent. Just slightly. Is that, slight? is that still active since it was ripped in half? No, it's destroyed now. Um, but Delia, you're going to recognize it as your... Um, what's that spell you have that makes people like you? Hip, uh, like hypnotism or, or something? Something like that, Stockholm yeah. Stockholm Syndrome? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, kind of. Yeah, it's hypnotism. Yeah, hypnotism, yeah. So it's it's essentially just that, but localized inside the room. Just so makes them we more friendly. I'm sorry, if we repair it, is it going to repair those things too? Um, You wouldn't be able to, because they're magical. Right. It's only for mundane things. So yeah, um, we'll say you guys are like Copperbuckle and Kraz are chopping trees and sort of helping mend this thing. Uh, and, I'm going to be doing a mixture of uh, chopping trees and keeping the kids uh, safe. Slash okay. Contained. And then uh, actually, Talon's like fixing, 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 fixing all the important shit. Have the, have the lizard go ahead since he's kind of quick. Have him like start heading back towards the mountains. Make sure we're not going to see any friends come up. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I got this in Scarlet. Okay. Give me a stealth roll. And explain how you're coming up. Are you coming up sort of at dusk? Or are you going in broad daylight? Yeah, like, go up through so, the forest, not along the path. Of course. So is it stealth? Yeah. <laughs> now okay. I'm walking. Um just go raging. Kicking over trees as he walks. You, yeah, you don't you don't see anything as you go. Um, towards the mountains. Mm. Can I do a perception check? Steve? Yeah, go for it. You're going to have to get something pretty big, like 18, uh -huh, I'd say. Just because you did kind of blow your stealth. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. No, you don't see anything up there. It looks clear. Well, I told him to be careful because... Yeah. Hey, it looked clear to me, but I'm going <laughs> to... Be careful because I rolled like shit! <laughs> I don't see anything there now, I should say. Yeah. All right. Mm. Well, we fix it all up. We're ready to roll. We still have all the horses. Are we taking the car uh, the caravan and the cart? Or just one? You know, if we're able to repair or get this thing functional, or at least send someone back to salvage it, we might be able to get some gold from it. Maybe. Oh, they're both functional now. You fixed them both. Um, I mean, the cart was never really, like, damaged. Just the horse got killed. But the question is, are we driving them both back? Or are you putting one all on. our eggs in one? Okay. Yeah, so, just, so we have two, two transportations. At so least. who's leading? The one with all the kids in it? Oh, yeah, I'll be with the, with the I'll be in the uh. Oh, okay. Let's wait on Copper Brickle. Would it be smarter if, like, um, Delilah and Talon go first and the kids stay behind, uh, stay behind as I'm Basically, make sure nothing happens to them. Okay, so you're saying, like, are you both going at the same time, or what are you sort of suggesting there? Uh, not at the same time, because that's, like, 
basically a big win of opportunities to attack either side or shake mm -hmm. us both. But if like Hmm. Okay, back. Welcome back. That's also, my name was being a creep. So. Also, could we have like modified the one so that there was a window to the back so that they can like communicate if someone's in the back with the kids? Yeah, you, know, you can cut a hole. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got the, yeah the fabric up on top of it. Just cut a hole in that. So, um, we're going. The cart first, right? The so or, or, oh, you mean probably wouldn't hurt. Well, think about it this way: if we're heading back in the area we just left, and the last time we'd passed through there, we'd been fired at with arrows and left a whole bunch of horse jerky out in the sand. Uh, do we really want to lead with the already damaged and mended, possibly already weakened, of the two? So or my misunderstanding. The, the less maneuverable of the two, probably not have that in the front. Yeah. yeah. So we're Plus, probably... if all else fails, I can unleash the idol on you as an attack distraction. Yeah. Hmm. What's up? Could we take the third horse, lash it to the first wagon? And have the second wagon hitched up to the back of it, so it's a wagon train instead. Yeah. Do you want to make it a train? Well, because if we do that, then that would leave the idle on free. Like, yeah, it might slow us down a little bit, but I mean, we were at a walking pace coming out here anyway, so... And the, and the idle could be in the back, just making sure shit doesn't attack us from behind. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um. So how are we sitting in here i'm sitting with the kids okay like inside uh, yes like like right here okay like in case i need to crouching get tiger hidden dragon um now are we taking the dwarf with us uh that was my yeah. other oh, question yeah. salty's gonna he... see him hang okay the dwarf is hey i'll buy the rope <laughs> salty has rope but you know you, you can't just hang a man in the desert without it's the thought that counts so here's my other. Thinking, oh, sorry. I was thinking of putting him like onto the cart with children, so you can see the misdeeds they've done. You know, like go trip. I'll put a put a loop of rope around his head so we he can't talk either. Make it so his mm -hmm. mouth. Is <laughs> okay. Um, now I'm gonna say the children don't want to go back in the caravan. You try and usher them in. They're all like visibly scared and like trying to complain. Uh, any chance we could kind of use a charisma check to kind of persuade them that it's going to be a lot longer of a walk? Uh, <laughs> oh, you, that's how it's worded. I'm not threatening to leave them in the desert. It's a longer you. walk, fine. asshole. I could carry them. I'm trying to, hey, come on! I'm using reason. I well, could carry them. Uh, okay. That would be something like a bluff, I would say. Another thing, though, could we take? Wait, how? Huh? <laughs> windows in the side of the fabric so they can actually hey, that's see not a the bad caravan. idea. So they're not like in a prison cell. Okay, sure, you could do that. Um, but I mean, I know bluff's not really the thing for it, but just that idea of like a more um amiable charisma check is what I'm looking for. So if anyone wants want to Salty try and do it. try and bluff the kids, yeah, go for it. I mean, like Salty can do it as a last hope because he's shit at it. You mm -hmm. try and play the Santa card, but I mean, Delia could also like hypnotize him or something and be like, hey, "It's fine, kids." <laughs> Rehypnotize it. Yeah, it's fine. Get back in the get cart. in the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> so, anybody that doesn't have negative personality, oh, Alan, sure. Delia. I mean, Bluff well, has I've, like I've, eight. Four. Yeah, it's pretty fucking good. Damn. Oh! <laughs> All right. Delilah is now like the patron saint of wayward children. I just calling it here. <laughs> <laughs> She's just like Delilah's goddamn the kids. Peter Pan. That's right, yeah. Taking all these fucking kids away. Yeah, she just sort of like goes up and she's like ruffling their hair and stuff like that and just helping them off in, just trying to soothe them, calming words. 
right, so the kids are stuffed in. <laughs> uh, we have the dwarf here, right, with Karaz. Uh, no, farther in, like, right here, as he's looking at the kids. So basically, like, saying, go trip. Okay. So Salty's... And also, then, he can't get out of the cart. Smart, yeah. So you thought about that. Okay. Delia, where are you sitting? Are you going to be driving the the whole train? I'm the best driver out of all of us, because... No, it went great last time. Salty has two. And it's untrained. What other people got? It's almost like I sit there and I find out what skills you don't have and write shit. I'm just kidding, I don't do that. <laughs> Almost. Hey guys, who's ready to use an acrobatics check? I've, I've seen that before. The scholarly mage just looks at the sky going, really? Yeah. Yes, really. He like lifts up his fucking robes and you got those like little bony knees. <laughs> 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 I'll jump it, fuck! <laughs> oh god, get those legs with the, uh, the, bowed, the, the bowed springs. Plus <laughs> five to acrobatics. <laughs> Well, I I would say probably not have Talon and Delia in the other carts. Chicken and eggs. Probably have them up front so they could actually shoot things. Yeah, but fair. Because from the cart you can proximity shoot. To, proximity to the uh, Eidolon is also important. Oh yeah, what's your range on that? Uh, this level, I believe it's... No? 40. 40 feet. At least okay. that's what I saw last time. I'll Let me bring up the page and double check. Yeah, for sure. Maybe Talon... I did bookmark it. Oh, cool. Maybe Talon could just sit like right here, because then he can look in the back there and also still communicate with us. Or that'd be too far from his idol. On. <laughs> One of you is gonna get an ass whooping. I mean, Salty can try and drive the cart if you two want to just throw spells out the back. Yeah, I mean that's fair. I mean, would you be? Talon's a bit more supportive, so maybe he would be the better driver and then have Salty and Delia able to shoot. That makes sense. Um, I, mean, I don't know. Just Sal Salty can ride shotgun. Uh, share a mental link or allows for communication across the distance. It's a free action. What's, uh, what's Talon's handle animal or ride? Uh, uh... I mean, maybe better than yours. I only have one in ride and three in handle animal. I, I have, have four, so I, I can do handle animal four. Nice. Okay, I'll take that. Okay. So yeah, okay, we'll... I have three in ride, but that's crap because armor. Well, you don't you don't have to hand. I mean, that'd be fourteen. Oh no, that is a ten. But still, I mean, you don't need to do it right now. We're good. Just get, get the practice roll out of the way. <laughs> Well, just kidding, guys. Just kidding. <laughs> um, so, are you guys going at a bit of a brisk pace? I would imagine. Uh, faster than walking. Yeah. Maybe like jogging speed. Because I mean, we are down a horse, but right. So, are we camping for the night in the forest before heading back? Because remember, it's going to take us two days to get back. I would think we would want to get as far away from wherever we found bandits as possible, since it didn't seem like we had bandits for a while. Okay. What do you guys think? Well, if we get back into the mountains proper, then we could find, like, an alcove or something, because if we're out in the forest, then that's nothing but cover for them. Because, I mean, if we're going through a valley in the middle of the mountains, then that... I mean, just go find a little pocket canyon or something. It's up to you guys. We're hoarding underneath a cliff. Whatever. So you're heading out now? I'd say so. We already had all this commotion. Okay. So you guys head out, and for the first night, which is now, nothing happens. The next morning begins. And who was sleeping during the night? Anybody? I was. Wouldn't people take it on watches? Right, and that's what I'm asking. So who's... Okay, yeah, I see what you mean. Um... Besides, even even if it wasn't from a defensive standpoint, someone would have to be awake at all times. At least two people to watch the kids. I'm always up. Well, one to watch the kids and one to make sure the cart actually drives. Fun fact, Eidolons are demons and don't sleep. 
<laughs> True, yeah. <laughs> kind of like one of the kids runs off, I get a mental missive going, wake the fuck up. Hey, you, get back in there. So, um, the, the, the crack of dawn begins with the pounding of war drums. 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 Doom. 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 And you feel it just shaking down into the mountain pass. And you are here. Oh, okay. Well, rather long than I thought. Yeah. But doom, doom. And then you start uh, seeing figures appear along the ridges. We uh, kicking the horses in the high gear? Uh, well, one of those figures does something aggressive, I'm just going to fling a whole bunch of buckshot up at him. Okay. Because, like, yeah, they might be way up there, but if there's a whole bunch of them way up there, it's hard to miss. No, that's that's fair. Like, so if they're, they're staring at us, and they can stare at us. They're, the they're up there. Just staring. Oh, hey, are these guys related to Van Cleef? <laughs> I thought that'd be fun. <laughs> right, gotta, gotta love. That brings Fucking, back a lot uh, of memories. Defy us brotherhood. That's right, yeah. Fucking dog. But, um... As as you guys welcome to Westfield. Slowly <laughs> approach, like I mean, they're they're all sort of at a, at a distance. At that moment, however, you hear a screech. Somebody about to get shot. <laughs> Give you a perception check. Everyone or just uh... Uh, anyone except for Kraz. Fuck. <laughs> he rolled good. Okay. Well, I don't even know if I want to roll. <laughs> Salty. Well, don't even... worry. You can't. Uh, you can't take a uh, sand check in this game. That's right. <laughs> Fuck. It's a lie. Well, it's hard. I critical that, fail and just that's somehow right. <laughs> kill okay. everyone. Woo! Twenty-one. Twenty-one and eighteen. Excellent. Um. So a hail of arrows flies around the cart. Now it doesn't. It doesn't look like he was in like, aimed at you necessarily, more so to distract you from the real threat, which was three of these bandits, if you will. That's a bit presumptuous. Flying down to you on leathered wings. Oh, uh, Draconic I... bat? Wait, wait, bat! I got... I got javelin. Can I chuck one of the javelins? Could we try a diplomatic solution before we have hell break loose? Or has Bard already been shooting? I just want to clarify. Oh, no, no, no. Bard has the shotgun just kind of following them the entire way down. Because if they're going to land on top of the cart, they're not landing on top of the cart. <laughs> well, guess the fuck what they're trying to do. Land on the cart. So we're going to have one. Now, he hasn't landed yet, but one's trying to land here. And two, like so. But these are on top origami, so to make that easier, I'll, I'll put them like that. So that's that's so their plan. Do think, do these characters literally have bat wings, or do they have like gliding wings that they fashioned out of leather? Ah, yes, they do have gliding wings. You're correct. Do you have the icon for the eidolon, by the way? Sure, I'll throw them out. Get that little octopus. <laughs> oh, the octopus, right? Well, first of all, I was going to do the cow. I'm just going to give my shield to the kids. Okay. Or just I don't need her or some shit like that. So, uh, I guess let's roll initiative. Unless Salty's firing off around. Uh, you know what? Well, this guy's trying to land. His hands are preoccupied with the uh, wings, eh? Correct. Can, shouldn't we do a initiative check? No. That's what we're doing. Oh well, oh, shit. can Salty um, instead grab this son of a bitch around the neck as he's trying to land? Oh, his hands are full. I want to grab this son of a bitch, and that now I have a bargaining piece. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um. Give me. Give me a grapple check, then. I guess. Uh, what the hell is a grapple check? Okay. Give me just your base attack bonus. Uh. So D twenty plus two, probably. Oh, is that not a CMB? Well, it is a CMB, but I didn't know if you had that stat on you. Yeah. Can I, can I like, push them away? Crap. 
from landing. Yeah, it doesn't quite shoot work. Them twice. Um, so you would have to climb on top. Should That's be a right. climb well, roll. If you're landing on top of the fabric, could he just like punch their feet and have them fall? <laughs> Like yeah, it, it's it's a fabric roof. Just you've got these big foot uh, foot impressions, like somebody standing on top of a trampoline. You're under, just punch the feet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I, I get on top. Excellent. Now I got a proper fight on our hands. Uh, um. So salty missile. This guy's landed. Uh, give me initiative, everybody. Then. Let's see. Okay. Oh. Oh wait. Ooh, salty! I like it. That's eight. Salty's no, fucking six. pissed that he missed grabbing that son of a bitch. And that's an eight. Thank you. Okay. So we start with Copper Buckle. You're face to face with someone who's discarded his glider and has pulled out a sword. Salty's gonna try and strangle a son of a bitch again. <laughs> Hand over your car. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hand over your car. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me that CMB. Where are you, little wazik? <laughs> oh, you grabbed him around the neck. <laughs> <laughs> like basically. <laughs> All right, well you're choking him out. Um, give me one d4 plus your strength. Even yeah. before you pop his head like a pimple. Well, I mean, let's see. So, 1d4. Let's see. Dice, 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 dice. D4. Uh, nice. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you, you're choking him. <laughs> you're just, like, squeezing, and it's starting to go purple. <laughs> okay. Um, next up, we have one of the guys facing our good friend, Braz. I, I, well, can I say something before he has, does anything? Sure. They, like, like there's kids here, I don't want to fight you, just be wise, and I don't have to kill you. It's like, kids, don't make me laugh. In the middle of the desert, hand over your gold, lizard. Why is he suddenly uh, reminding me of Space Ghost? Oh, that's nothing like Space Ghost. I wish I could like... do Space Ghost voice. <laughs> no, the I vocal the vocal mannerism. Well, basically why I said it's like you had your chance oh shit okay so he swings at you and you sort of move slightly to the side can't move a whole lot because you're on this roof now our yeah. good friend Mr. Talon's turn any chance Bar can talk some sense into the person he's trying to strangle or am I uh, actually should I be focusing, focusing more on making sure that the cart continues you might want to drive the idol and can do whatever though the idol one's still lashed up, isn't it? Mm -mm. We have the three horses really? lashed. Oh, in that He's case, behind. send the idol on after from cart to cart. Trying to send it to this. Ah, help him! I can't click. There we go. Oh, okay, sure. It hops up on top. I don't know how the fuck it does that, but very impressive. Oh. That's right. It just, yeah, it bites a hole through the. It's a demon. <laughs> That's right. I think they'd be a little bit unnerving just having this giant demonic cow horse, whatever in the fuck, mm -hmm. bite through the fabric. Just <sighs> be horrifying. So this one brandishes his sword. And. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, whoops. Hits your Eidolon for seven points of damage. Roll pretty good there. Wait, the Eidolon didn't bite him, though. It only moved. Oh, yeah. Give me a bite as well, actually. Sorry. Now, with the change to the Eidolon, that would be a D6 or a D8? Um, Where am I rolling to hit first, the D20? It's D8 plus 2. So, 20 for the hit, then D8. That's right. D8 plus 2. Uh, 20 plus 6 for the hit. No. Okay. Absolutely not. Wow. Holy shit. That was a miss. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this guy, like, slashes it when it goes in for the bite. Now we have, yeah, Kraz, your turn. Uh, I'm going to bull rush the guy right next to me, basically knocking me off the car. Okay, so yeah. So it raised bull rush. For sure. Give me, let's see him be, right? Yep. 
CMB. Okay, so <laughs> Kraz just fucking bolts, smashes into this guy, and he goes flying off the cart. Um, so, so he's gone because you guys are going like Mach ten, right? <laughs> nice. And I yell to the other guy like, "Like, you really want to do this?" He just looks at his friend, just sort of spiraling and rolling down. He's like, "Oh shit!" All right, your turn, Foxy. Um, I'm not even sure what my options are. One of them's getting choked out in front of me, and then <laughs> and the other one's pretty far trying to bite it. <laughs> I mean, you can still hit one. Is he like twenty-five feet away? Yeah. Are you going to take the hit and jump off, or is he staying on there? No, he's staying on. He doesn't really want to jump off a moving fucking carriage train. Hit him with magic missile, shove him off. Magic missile. Actually, would that even work? Because uh, magic missile is a force attack. Okay, uh, no, but <laughs> that's pretty cool. At some point, maybe, when she gets like a higher level and she's hitting multiple missiles. Force push bitches. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I just use magic missile on him. Yeah, cool. Give me one d four plus one. Cause you can't miss it. It's fucking bullshit. <laughs> I love magic missile. <laughs> yep. So this missile arcs up and smashes this guy in the face, and he's like, "What the fuck?" Of course, you take your your bow out and you fucking Hawkeye that shit. Wouldn't the only way to make magic missile miss be if you had spell resist? Actually, the only way to negate magic missile is shield spell. As she's doing that, she yells at him, leave at once. Oh, give me intimidate. You there, fuck right off. Oh, it's a crit fail. You oh. intimidate yourself. Yeah. <laughs> he um, is like, leave? Why? We're just getting started. And that's when you see another hail of arrows. Oh dear. Okay. Panic. So <laughs> that's that's where you panic, yeah. Okay, that's not too bad. Cool. So um I'm gonna say Delia probably with her big mouth, gets smashed by one of these arrows in, in like, the stomach or something uh, for the six points of damage. And the one probably just wings Talon because he was nearby. One uttered profanity later, I still managed to maintain control of the horses. That's right, yeah. You're still just going... Dr -dr, and you're just, like, looking back, and you're like, oh, fuck, guys. <laughs> I mean, even if all of those were aimed at Salty, he only would have taken one. So, wait, wait. Huh? oh no, I wasn't wasn't rolling for AC. I was just anything like eighteen or higher, say or seventeen. Oh, or higher. okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, actually, that was a crit technically. And that's what I mean. Like salty uh, has uh -oh. twenty AC. Oh, that's not too bad. So. Yeah. No, salty is a beast right now. So well, yeah, Delia got hit pretty hard actually. <laughs> that's true. Turns out she took nine points of damage. So like this was like a. A thick fucking arrow just plunging in your stomach. The lie is like, oh god, like sort of leans over, a little bit of blood gushing out of her. It's fine, guys. We're he we're heroes, remember? Yeah, my <laughs> heroes insides. never die. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's copper buckle up again, and the cart is moving. All right. So let's let's try and do the whole bargaining piece thing. Yeah. Kind of. You know, reach over, knock Talon on top of the head. Hey, stop the cart. Stop the, the cart. The, stop the cart. <laughs> Delia is going to uh, disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> now, Salty's going to pick this son of a bitch up and with the other hand put the blunderbuss barrel against his head. Okay. And just bellow up into the mountainside. You shoot, I shoot. 
We all shoot. <laughs> That's right. Um. Well, do we? Let's just say, like a single arrow, just <laughs> in your direction. <laughs> sort of fl plinks off in the nowhere. Should I? <laughs> <laughs> just eyeing the cliff side. There's that. Elias uh, says, "There's no honor amongst thieves." And and uh, you hear like a, a shout down. And what proof do we have? You'll let him go. <laughs> so now that's the question there. <laughs> <laughs> well, the proof he's not dead yet would be step one. So does anyone speak? Um, of course, of course. Um, is of anyone, course. Well, I was gonna say, does anyone speak goblin? But I'm pretty sure we do. Um, I think Scrib Dick did. Yes, I believe Scrib Dick did. Does anyone speak Orcish? Uh huh. Aha! Cool. <laughs> well, it's similar enough. I'll give it to you. You hear this sort of shout like, What the hell's going on? Like, you know what I mean? And a, a smaller figure comes out. Why aren't they dead yet? Who are you? <laughs> he yells down. I just yell, you're back and we're carrying children. <laughs> we're carrying children? I don't give a shit! Who's the fucking dwarf? <laughs> Which dwarf? They can't see the ones out the curtain. Yeah, they see Copper Buckle. <laughs> his name's this Copper Buckle! And unless you wait, has has Bart already killed the one he's still no, choking? No, no, no. I've he's, got he's... one hand around the guy's neck, and my blunderbuss is resting against his face. Where's the like... Where's the little rat? What rat? We we don't have any rat folk with oh us. Oh my god! You can see this goblin's like holding his head, just like please God, just fucking kill them already. <laughs> and he um. He shouts something, and a little magic missile, two of them actually, arc off to different points of the mountains. And you hear a rumbling. I think we should go. <laughs> right. Click. <laughs> Bard, uh, I'm just gonna, for shits and gigs, just roll me a crit with your blunder blast, please. Uh, that would be... There's twice as damage, I think. Yeah, so that would be 2d8 point blank. Where's my... Hey, where's my dice roll it thing? Just Give to me. see if it is a, a really fun result. Also, it says... Uh, yeah. the, so you do... You guy... delete him, though. His head just gets, like, fucking eviscerated. There's, like, uh, brain I... matter splashing all over Delia. <laughs> <laughs> Can I punch this guy since we're like distracted? Yeah, fucking go for it, yeah. Um yeah. just punching him? Check. Yeah, just punch him off the damn thing. Oh yeah, you you can like throw him because he's probably staring at like his buddy whose head just fucking to like just is gone now. So you you, you throw oh. him off. Um, Talon, if you please, a handle animal check. Because there is a rock slide headed in your direction. Oh boy. While he's doing that, I'm gonna throw their corpse. Ah! Oh. Like, okay, but I'm gonna throw the corpse like over the back of the cart into this one's driver compartment, so it's out of my lap. And okay. Reload my shotgun. So you hear um, you hear a cry as the rumbling goes, <laughs> and the cart just takes off. Right. Um, let's go ahead and say. Um, actually, I don't even need to roll that. So a, a magical missile flies off and just pegs Kraz in the back. He was throwing the guy. But that's it. You guys are tearing off. And behind you, the 
ca like the chasm, whatever, is just collapsing as the mountains sort of slide inward. <laughs> Looks like them Duke boys are at it again. <laughs> <laughs> Boss hog! <laughs> yeah, so you guys take off, and by the time the horses tire, there's no sign of your enemies. The way behind oh. you is sealed, and it is night. Of course, they'll go back in the... Wait, wait, Bard wasn't done with that corpse yet. Oh, sorry. I I can give him back to you. Okay. There you go. Okay. So was that the goblin from like our first adventures? Um, it would take one hell of a perception check to recognize him. Well, or just a little bit of thinking, being like, why was he looking for rat folk? Oh, he was probably looking because we have the elf and Mr. Eidolon Man. Of so that possible. Or um, I'll give you intelligence if you want to recognize his face. Yeah. Just click intelligence to roll mm -hmm. that. Yep. Oh, it's a ten. Um, Talon's the only other person who could attempt that. I, I say if Talon gets a ten as well, we'll, yeah, we'll resolve whether. Oh. So Delia is like, why does that voice seem familiar? And Talon's like, it's that son of a bitch Nilbog. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, now here's a question for you, Rappel. Yes. Is Nilbog a Nilbog or is Nilbog a goblin? Yes. <laughs> They're different things, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> no, his name's Nilbog. Yeah, but that's what I mean. Is Nilbog actually a goblin or is he a Nilbog? Because Nilbogs are related to goblins. Well, Nilbog is goblin though. backwards. But it, it is a different creature as well, though. Like in the oh, in Pathfinder? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. No, no, he's a goblin. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah but he's a goblin. Okay. Yes, sir. Either way, you've come, you're resting. The children are visibly like, what the shit, right? Yeah. I'm, again, don't I'm don't let them see the court plan's head. <laughs> oh, Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I'm um, like basically uh, trying to calm the kids down, even though I got like a, a smolder of my shoulder, burnt a bit. So we um we rest up for one more evening, and then we ride back into Angbok, perhaps with a few more questions than we intended, and a bit more wealthy. <laughs> Oh, I love it, Borrowed. I was waiting. I was waiting, dude. I was like, he's probably doing something, like blowing its head off. Yep. Without actually like going into paint and head hex matching it, that's close enough for color. No, that's quite good. So, my question is, I think we're going to call it here with our sort of returning to Angba. We've technically completed a quest of sorts we've technically received a payment <laughs> i mean we we didn't successfully complete the mission but it is resolved <laughs> well there's two things i want to do before the session ends please yeah okay first of all i want to know if i've got a missive from the treasurer yet see how much that ship's worth you have um okay. oh we're talking okay so you uh, your question was how much was the ironclad worth, and if you could receive payment equal to, right? Yes. Right. Well, actually, not necessarily if I could receive payment equal to, because he didn't ever insinuate that, and okay. I would need to talk to the king about that. That's why I still have the five hundred gold from the king, because okay. I'm going to get called for that. But just the mist of saying how much it was worth. So it was worth. Um say like 20,000 gold pieces or something like that for, for value be sure because it's just like a, you're just reading like the receipt right yep yep something along okay. those lines and the other thing I want to do is I want to go find Mr. Steel Grip ah lord you got some splaining to do Interesting. I like that. Um, but we will resolve that encounter 
next time. Uh, is there anything? So before we sort of end this session with our return to Angbok, um, we're all going to, before next session, level up to level three. And then we'll be entering Guildnock at level three, assuming we all head in that direction. Um, but the big right. question is, is there anything anyone's... Like, uh, what's a good way of putting this? So we just resolved this encounter in a certain way. Is there anything we want to follow up on it with? What are we doing with uh, the children? Like, you know, these are all things we need to think about before next session. Just try and yeah, figure out... We need to do something with the kids. We need to get right. the corpse of this guy dealt with. You know, as proof that, hey, there's assholes up in the hills. Also, your hills are now collapsed. And True. And we need to get Mr. Slaver there hanged. And then sort of, yeah. So just, just think about where you'd like the campaign to go, um, how you want to resolve these sort of situations, because sure, maybe your characters feel morally obligated to help the children. I mean, that's on each individual character, right? Well, I'm going for it to kill the guy. But at the same time, you're not really obligated to help them or follow up on it, so it's entirely up to you. Uh, if this is someone you want to track down, let me know again, because that way I can you know, write more stuff than I have for it, right? Because mm. um, maybe we keep it in the background, maybe we make that the main focus. Uh, but the good news is, um, you guys do at least have another reason to head to Guildnock. So, might be easier for Salty to talk you into that trip, because it's going to be expensive hiring a boat. <laughs> um, <laughs> just a heads up, it'll be like 800 gold pieces for all of you to get there. And that's not counting the gnomes if we want to try and smuggle them on. How would we even get a boat to Guildnock? Isn't it to the west? Like, how do we yeah, go overland? Yeah, so it would have to, No, it has to go all the way around the continent. Oh. Yeah, it, it'll take one hell of a trip. Either way, yeah, I'll, um, I'll talk to you guys around in like, Discord and stuff, and then we'll meet up for the next session, hopefully soon. I do have a lot of stuff written up for guild knock and things not a lot of encounters statted because i don't normally stat them like that but i have a lot of ideas written we head in that direction yeah peace yeah.